Johnny, can you hear me? I'm right here. I forgot about the unmuting of yourself. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, I know. It's fucking gay on Telegram. I don't know why it does that, but uh, uh, how you doing, brother? Good, man. What's up? What's happening? Oh, well, a lot of shit's happening, as usual. But I heard. I saw. I saw some of that. I, I, I saw you getting threatened by giant Mexicans or something. Yeah, yeah, I got I got threatened by um, comic skate Mexicans who think I live in Mexico City, which I don't. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, it's a it's a Mexico's a large place. So. Yeah, it's a large place. I, I'm not worried. Let's just put it that way. But uh, no, no. But uh, I hope you're doing okay. How you been since I'm we last talked? I'm great, dude. I am great. I have been, uh, work is awesome. I can't ask for a better job right now. It's fucking winter time. I know you're in Mexico, so like this doesn't matter, but it's fucking winter time. And like, I'm inside in the warm, you know, I work construction and it doesn't have to be like that. So that's awesome. Um, everybody, yeah, everybody's good. Um, life is great, man. This chilling show. We just started season nine of the Paranormies uh, two weeks ago. We did an episode zero because we're not allowed to go on break. But um, those Jew tunnels, I mean, like, dude, I can't keep, I can't go away for two weeks to take By a the break. Way, season. I want to say one thing. Keep in mind, we're on kick. I know. Uh, I know. I, okay. I, 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 just, I, just I wanna... am too now. So I yeah. am too now. So like, I have to watch my mouth. A yeah. Lot yeah. I, 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 I just want to say that. Um, I'm good. I'm good. To, to let you know um no worries no worries but, but yeah we like so we came back did that and then uh last week we just did an episode on the dead internet theory which is interesting to say the least now what is um, the dead internet theory well the dead internet theory was something that came out of i believe it was x uh, originally it came from 4chan i don't remember exactly what board likely it was x and um it basically posits that there are basically no real humans left on the internet. Everything is bots. Uh, at least 60 to 70 percent of traffic on the internet is bots now. Uh, most of the people you're arguing with on the internet are bots that are designed to keep your eyes on the internet and not anything else. Um, that Google has curated and created uh, a gigantic Potemkin village. Potemkin village, excuse me. Um, in that if you've ever looked stuff up on Google, it'll say billions and billions of results. But when you scroll down through the pages, it gets to 35, 40 pages. And that's the end of the results. What happened to the billions? That's only like 240, right? That's like Google is just fronting like that. I don't know. It's, you have to listen to it. It's a very interesting thing. I thought it was, I mean, I've heard a lot of people talk about it. Um, and we've discussed on the show many times on my show um, that, you know, the internet is, is, full of bots. I mean, remember when, when Elon bought Twitter, uh, there was that he was going to look into the amount of bots. Yeah. And he was, was to destroy over. the bots. Yeah. 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 Right. And he, he has, he I did mean, bots. at all. If anything, yeah. they're worse. If anything, they're worse. They're worse actually. Yeah, you're right. And they're all what we call, uh, if there was a real person, it would be what would be considered a time sink troll. Like somebody who's just there to waste your time. Like he's not really arguing, but he's just going to keep their back there. He's going to reply guy you into, into wasting your entire day. And that's literally what these bots do. So no humans, just just bots. Yeah, and they say, oh, well, here's how I got a million dollars, or here how's, how's I got uh, unbanned from Instagram and all this shit. Like it, it's just he did not eliminate the bots. Uh, no, let's just put it that no. way. Um, no, if and anything, him, oh, I man. think they're worse. Like I'm, I'm not even kidding. I like. Oh, I believe you too. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Like I said, anytime there's somebody who jumps on one of my tweets and wants to argue about something or is in a, in a, in a thread arguing, you can always check their profile. And it's like, no followers, no, no, nothing. Their name, it's like a, a name plus a shitload of numbers. It's obviously a bot, but they're, but they seem to be having conversations. You know, I mean, there was that one guy, I can't remember which account it was, but he went into like, I guess, a real live state of depression because he realized that out of his 50,000 followers, like 36,000 of them were bots. And he said, and I've had in-depth conversations with many of them in DMs. Like, what the fuck was I even doing with my life, right? <laughs> Imagine that, right? All this time you think that you're talking to people and getting through to people and making, you know, your takes are being, are being spread by human beings, but they're actually just talking to bots. It's got to do something to your psyche. 700 people watching live now on the kill stream. Now, okay, so I said we wouldn't talk NET or S drama, but I guess I lied. 
Uh, ah, that's fine. You know I don't mind. Yeah, I know you don't mind. Um, we talked a Fuck lot it. about it last time. That was like the whole show. But um, what what's the update over there? <laughs> the it- update is that so NJP is no longer. Uh, it turns out that it was all just a big way for. Like I said, for these guys to have do nothing jobs, fake jobs, and Jesse came out, and you know Seven Sun came out and said all the things, and that six hour drunk rant, you know, where he basically said that everybody was a parasite except for him and Mike and McNabb, and you know everybody was bad except for her public service announcement, and it was everybody's fault but theirs. People be sure to place your DoorDash orders. You know, and that everything the NJP was just a grift, and Mike got sucked into the grift, and the grift was ruining TRS, which is a grift in itself. You know. And now Mike is rebranding the support groups, which used to be the NJP support groups. Now it's no longer NJP. I believe they're calling it the National Support Network. So, Oh, so they changed the name. The, well, it's not the NJP anymore, but the support groups are going to be still the pool party network. So they're going to go back to the pool party idea of, you know, still still meeting IRL so you can, so you can give these guys some I mean, money. It sounds pretty gay. It is very gay, dude. Like at this point, I don't know what to tell you guys at this point. Like, and their their rhetoric is they've gone from hating conservatives, you know, the conservatives are the worst thing ever, to now they're basically sounding like basic conservatives. It's it's sad. I don't listen, but people listen and tell me what's going on. Sure. Yeah, I have the so, same thing happen. Yeah, it's, like, so. yeah, it's all good, and it's listen, but it's just sad. Like, oh, they said this. They said that. Yeah. Um, There's like they're still trying to do a call-in show. Like, it's basically Mike. And Sven and McNabb and uh, Borzoi. And that's pretty much it. Uh, Stryker and Warren have rebranded as the show called War Strike because that's original. Wow. Um, yeah. And they're basically doing the Strike and Mike thing. Where in, but instead, so, but now Stryker doesn't have to wait for Mike to talk. He can just talk all over Warren for five hours. So that's, so that's, so that's a basically the same thing. Then, at least. <laughs> I mean, at least he can, at least his cocaine fueled rants, you know, he can finish them, you know, as opposed to getting cut off by, well, here's the thing, you know. So, so that's, nothing really going on on that front. Nothing right? really good. Now, all the juicy stuff is over with. Uh, if people are still listening and giving them money, I don't know what to tell you. You're an idiot. But, uh, you know, the, the money is literally going to, to the, so these guys don't have to get real jobs like at all. They don't produce good content, uh, they've chased off all their good cr- content creators. And yeah, it's, I mean, you know, the NJP thing, the drama with that's all over with, that was a grift. Everybody who, everybody who put their face out there for that and gave money and man hours for that. Well, on you, that's what you get. You know, that's what happened. All that was for nothing. Just Dingo like, I mean, he wants to call sad. in, by the way, what do you think about who, that? Dingo? Yeah. That's fine. You know, Dingo's been like ignoring my messages for like a week, but, but he wants Has to. He? Well, well I, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to you know, prescribe anything nefarious to that, but, um, he doesn't often check messages sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I don't want to say that's, that's a bad thing. He's got, you know, a job and everything. So yeah, I, I still, uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I like Dingo, but, but yeah, like I like Dingo too. I can't help <laughs> it. Uh, but yeah, he said, give me five minutes, give me five or six minutes and Dingo will call in. Uh, sure. And sure, yeah, I'll allow that for sure. You know Absolutely. how to call in Dingo on Telegram. <laughs> the the the, uh, the line is open, and you can yeah. certainly call in now. Now, um, what's going on? Okay, so let me think here. <laughs> Are they going to allow Trump to be president again? Depends. It depends. Um... The conspiracy take on that is that he was president 45 and this would make him president 47. So you've had 45 to nine, 47 is 11. He would be president 9-11. So, uh, and it, it fits in with a lot of the conspiracy, the conspiracy, like the Q stuff. I don't know. I don't know if they're going to let him be president again. I would like to see him in the debates at least. Uh, that was my favorite part of, of Trump running for president was just seeing him shit posting. Well, I think they're going to use the excuse that he didn't debate. During the GOP debates, to not actually have a debate, um, that would suck. Yeah, that would suck. Um, but I think that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like he's he's obviously gonna crush as far as Republican candidates go. I don't see it. Nikki Haley. I mean, yeah, 
I don't see Nikki Haley getting anywhere. I don't see anybody else really getting anywhere on the Republican side. Um, I mean, if they're going to run, what are they going to do on the Democrat side to beat them? Like, really? Like, Joe Biden, like, I guess today something came out that the, the White House is actually concerned over Joe Biden's health. Right. Yeah, well, no shit. So is everybody else. <laughs> well, yeah, it's was finally about time. It's about time. Bro, I just got to tell you this. I ain't never met an 80 year old that is, can fall down as many times as that motherfucker has. Dude, he's in break. trouble. Like, it's not even a joke. And, you know, Trump's old too, but like, uh, you know, he still gets around pretty good. He's still, you know, full of vigor. Uh, Biden is just barely hanging on, dude. Like, uh, for real, man, the other day when he was talking about uh, brewing beer and wherever he was in Michigan, and he was, just, and it was one of those speeches where he's <laughs> brewing the beer. It's like, what the fuck? And people were applauding because the sign came up that said applaud. But you have no idea what that man said. And somehow he's the leader of, well, I guess we're the free world still, right? Well, allegedly, yeah. <laughs> allegedly, yes. allegedly. We'll see what happens. I mean, dude, like, uh, we're supposedly fighting Iran right now, right? I like that. Uh, Iran did something, and Biden said, we're going to retaliate, but you guys can't do anything about it. Germany, tell them they can't do anything about it. And Germany's like, I guess you're going to retaliate. You can't do anything. You know, like, what the fuck is Germany going to, like, Germany has our back. <laughs> I don't know. The whole thing is retarded, in my opinion. Uh I know one thing is, um, what's his face with the mustache? John, what's his, what's his, always oh, got the, ta he's got the map of Iraq tattooed on his chest, basically. What's his name? Uh, John, John Roberts? Yeah. Yes. He's got to have a boner right now. Well, we're finally going to war with Iran. They really want that so bad. Like, they want they, well, that for like 15 years. They've wanted it forever, dude. They've wanted it since I remember Iran being the bad guy when I was a kid, man. You know, yeah. I remember like the, the, when I was a kid, like the big thing was, uh, with the hostages, right? The hostages in Iran. And like, that was a big deal. We rescued the hostages. And ever since then, Iran was a bad guy. And, and then, you know, they had the, the clock where the, Iran was going to make the bomb. They're five minutes away from making the bomb. It's been like that ever since BB's been around. Do you think they have the bomb? I, we don't believe nukes are fake. I mean, we don't believe nukes are real. Excuse me. That's what I meant to say. Oh, well, uh, we did a, I mean, I yeah, we did a do four part. We did a four that. part thing on, on nukes. Uh, and if anybody has them, it's not Iran. But yeah, nobody has them. But uh, the threat of them, if it, let's let's pretend let's let's pretend that I think they're real. Uh, yeah, do they real. have them at this point? They should. Uh, you know, they've had the ability to. They have all the enrichment stuff they have. If they wanted to make one, they could have at this point. Here's one of my reasons why I don't believe nukes are real. The only people who've ever used them is us. And apparently the world is full of crazy dictators and crazy evil people, and nobody's actually used one. You would think at this well, point there would have been the something. That's mutually assured destruction doctrine, though, right? Like, because um, if, if they did use them, I mean, they get wiped off the face of the earth. Um, sure, but that's like everybody, I mean, it, by who? The people they just nuked? I mean, that the whole the whole concept is like begging the question that, you know, that everybody has. These. You also got to remember that nukes are how fucking old the ones we have are from the 80s at best. Like Russia's probably don't fucking work if, in fact, you know, they even had any to begin with. Like, I don't know what kind of maintenance is being done on these. If you've seen the maintenance that's going on, on airplanes, I can't imagine the maintenance that's going on, <laughs> on nukes. You know what I'm saying? So you mean these black, strong female pilots are. That's what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> Shantae, Shantae, did you check the nukes today? Did you check the nukes? It says Thank you checked God it the off. Mexican drove me home from Mexico City. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Uh, Dude, it's it's ridiculous. I don't but that's the other thing is like the infrastructure to take care of all this stuff for as long as it you know, I mean, all this nuclear material has to be maintained somehow. All these warheads and all this shit. They're just they're they're in basically giant concrete holes in like Iowa and Montana and shit, right? Like the the, the yeah. silos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I say, yeah. I don't, I don't know how many people go out there to do fucking routine maintenance on. I know that when I was in the Navy, there was like routine PMS checks, preventive maintenance stuff that you had to do like all the time. Some, some of it was daily, some of it was weekly, some of it was monthly. Uh, who's maintaining the nukes? Who's maintaining everywhere? So I don't, I don't believe that if they are, they're well maintained and probably you'd have to like use a lot of WD-40 and wiggling of the plug to get them to go. 
Yeah, and I, you know, I don't I actually think that's a crazy theory that they don't. I I do believe nukes exist, right? And that they have, you know, that power. I think nuclear like, power exists. Absolutely, I think nuclear power is a thing. It's like one of the easiest ways to boil water. But, <laughs> and that's what it does. Nuclear nuclear turns it boils water, and the steam turns it turns the generator, turns the reactor, turns the the the, the turbine or whatever. All right, now here goes that's the question. Doll will send Hold five dollars on. on Rumble. God. My grandfather is still alive and kicking and very sharp. He saw the nukes go off in Japan. He said the colors were insane. Camera footage doesn't do it justice. Nukes are very, very real. He said, my grandfather is alive and kicking and very sharp. He saw the <clears> nukes <throat> go off in Japan. No, what he's, wait, excuse me. He said the colors were insane. Camera footage doesn't do it justice nukes are very real now what you said uh you said we were the only ones to ever use nukes so you didn't actually say that we didn't use nukes uh, well but, according to the official that's the official story is that the united states is the only country to ever have used nukes now in japan um i mean there's official records of the amount of bombing runs that actually like fire bombing the the terror bombing like we did in dresden and in germany uh that we did in japan um for weeks and weeks and weeks uh, including Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And, and their buildings like, are made of wood, by the way. Um, yeah, it's really easy yeah, to burn yeah, down yeah. paper and wood buildings. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm not so, sure if everybody understands that, but yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. And it was like, well, like, you know, like the nuke testing. Oh, my my great grandfather, my grandfather, whatever, was out there in the desert and he saw the, you know, he saw the, the test go off. And that's cool. But it's, a lot of things can make a mushroom cloud, like, a, you know, 250,000 pounds of TNT. Like what they did was they had the quote, the bomb, and then they had the test, which was, or the, um, the, what do you call it? The control, which was, this is a 20 kiloton bomb. So this is 20 kilotons of TNT, right? And we're going to blow up 20 kilotons of TNT and then blow up the bomb next to it to see which one looks, you know, and that's basically what they did. But who's to say that they didn't just blow up two sections of 20 tons of, you know what I mean? TNT. I mean people were watching this stuff from Vegas. Right, they're watching it from the rooftops in Vegas, and zero radiation poisoning and none of that stuff. None of the none of the fallout stuff ever happened. So they were having they were having watch parties on the the rooftop uh, apartments. They literally were when they were doing yeah, actually. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah, and then you watch the video, and even Rogan, dude, even on Rogan, just recently when Oppenheimer came out, they had the guy on there, and they were watching the videos, the test videos, and they're like, "Whoa, wait, where did the car go?" Well, is that a model car? And then on Rogan, they're like, well, maybe they faked some of the test videos, but I mean, the bombs are still real though. Oh, shut up. At that point, it's like, dude, shut the fuck up. It's all fake at that point. All right, it's all now. propaganda. It's all propaganda. At that, that point, dude, the nuke, how many years did grade school and high school students, in, you know, spend doing nuclear drill, like nuclear attack drills where you got under your fucking desk? If there's going to be a nuke and it's going to vaporize everybody, what the fuck good is getting under your desk? Um, I want to touch Becky Robinson's boots. It wouldn't do boots, any good. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, unless you, you want to saying? kill some bitch up. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, I'm in sixth grade. I'm like, we're all going to die. I am going after. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's like, small, bullshit. Like, under yeah, the desk. I understand. I'm under the uh, desk looking at her butt like, I should be grabbing that instead of the underside of the desk. <laughs> The desk won't save you. I, I right. The desk isn't going to save you. It's like, yeah, it's ridiculous. And, and we still have the fucking sirens that go, that go off all around, like the air raid sirens or the nukes, whatever the fuck they use them for, right? At noon on Tuesdays in several places in Ohio or Connecticut or whatever, there's a fucking siren that goes off, right? And that's the old air raid or the old nuclear alarm. It's propaganda. It's fear porn. All right. Now... We're waiting. So Dinko said he was gonna join. Um, no, no, we'll see. Wait, here's a, here's another super chat. A doll wolf sent two dollars on Rumble. <coughs> now, if you want to say the U.S. let the Indianapolis sink to cover it up, I might be with you. He saw the bombs go off in Japan and survived the hellish storms that hit his island afterwards. He said, "Now, if you want to say the U.S. let the Indianapolis sink to cover it up, I might be with you." He saw the bombs go off in Japan and survive the hellish storms that hit the island afterward. Um, what do you say to that? 
I mean, like I said, like if you drop a shit ton of incendiary devices, it's going to look like an explosion, a big explosion. You know, I mean, whether it's you can make a lot of things look like a mushroom cloud. So I don't know what he, what he saw. What he saw was explosions. He can't say that what he saw was an, was an atomic blast. Like nobody can. You don't you don't believe in in, in the. And the idea that there can even be an atomic blast is that what you're saying? Right. I don't believe I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that what Oppenheimer supposedly did, you know, I have now become death destroyer. <laughs> what a shag, dude. And, and even even fucking what's his name? Was it Roosevelt? Was like he didn't do anything. Yeah. Shut up. Truman was like it was me. It was yeah, that's right, Truman. It was me. He didn't do anything. I'm the guy that dropped the bomb. Shut up, Oppenheimer. You know what I mean? They're well, also whining. Well, he's right though, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's what like, he's doing. He's shut the fuck up. Going? Like, I'm the one that fucking yeah. made the call to drop the bombs. Right. Truman's like, like, I did it twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and he would have done it again. He was prepared to drop more, by the way. Uh, right. Whatever. He didn't care. He didn't look it, Truman probably didn't know the president's whether real or not, you know, if they're just a puppet or whatever. They don't know whether the bombs were. He probably thinks that they're real. With the compartmentalization of things, uh, and that's the other thing. Oh, so many people have to be in on it. No. No, hardly any people have to be on it. Just think of the game Werewolf. Have you ever heard of this? Uh, the game Werewolf, no. Where you get a circle Wolfenstein, of people. But... No, it's a, it's, a, it's a group game, right? It's a, it's a Russian game, and it's like a thought experiment. Right? And, then, um, and two people are the werewolf, and then the rest of the people are the villagers. And then at night, one of the werewolves kills a villager, and they're like, you have to go through and guess who the werewolves are. Well, the werewolves know who the werewolves are. So by the end of the game, usually... 99% of the time, the werewolves have won. It proves that a large, uninformed population is against a customs. small, very informed population. So, so the compartmentalization of anything is extremely important to these huge lies, like the, the, new, the atomic bombs, uh, whether, whether it's anything else. Um, the Holocaust. We'll just get into all the conspiracy stuff, right? The moon landing. That's a big and one today. Matt Walsh is getting his ass handed to him yeah. on There's Twitter because he wants to. He wants to do of all of, of all no, wait, of the one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec, one sec. Not too long yep, yep. after the war, most now, likely from radiation being close. Do you not believe in the moon landing? Oh, absolutely not. Well, I mean, I have to say that I do, but <laughs> okay. that's fine. But, that's fine. I but, got five I mean, hours of content for you. If you want to <laughs> Why don't you, though? Why don't I? Because uh, I don't believe the moon is a place or a thing you can go to. It's a light in the sky. Uh, it's not a floating ball of rock covered in dust. Rocks covered in dust don't reflect anything. Dust doesn't reflect light. The moon produces its own light. That's my opinion. We talk about this all the time on my show and on my Telegram channel. Yeah, that's um, what they asked, that, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just one of those people that have seen all of the things, uh, the differences between uh, the, the temperature differences between inside, you know, out in the sun and out in the shade. Uh, how did this, how did this, just the, the suits made by the bra company, um, Playtex was the company that made our uh, spacesuits. You know I mean, the, the bra company in the 60s made our spaces. Yes. 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 The lunar lander, not the lunar, the lunar lander looks like a really bad fourth grader tried to make a lunar lander at actually, Hobby Lobby with that's like not six, exactly with like, most convincing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 six dollars yeah. worth of shit from Hobby Lobby. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, like Owen Benjamin said in a line of meth that that's, yeah. Owen Benjamin is, uh, um, for all of his faults, he was, uh, a, a big help in getting a lot of people into the moon denial landing denial thing the moon landing so hoax thing is the earth flat i listen it's not a spinning space testicle i don't know what it is if it's anything no, wait, wait, it wait, is, wait 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 is the earth flat it is measured uh mapped and engineered all the bridges and train tracks and all the highways all are engineered and drawn as if the earth is flat so i'm gonna go with that when all the engineers on earth use that for their things for their for designing their major uh i mean but what about the sunrise and the sunset and the sunrise and sunset going. are all i don't want you want to do a flat earth thing we can do a flat earth thing i mean we can stuff. i mean it's not my expertise but yeah we can right i mean i don't yeah the sunrise and sunsets they all can be explained by 
the uh, the sun it is smaller and closer. I don't have my notes. I don't like know all this off the top sure. of my head. I have, and and yeah. again, it's not my um, expertise either. But yeah, go ahead. Right. The sunrise and the sunset is one of those things. Like I don't have to prove all of the things about to know all those things to know that we see too far. Uh, the curve, the math for the curve, eight inches per mile squared, does not work out at all for them at all. Um, it is demonstrably flatter than, like, just for example, like there's a there's a book. It's called Kansas is flatter than a pancake. And the uh, to scale, Kansas is flatter than um, than the topographical uh, profile of an actual pancake. Um, <laughs> they, somebody did somebody did the experiment, uh, but that kind of stuff we can the, the one that got me was being able to see too far like the ships going over the horizon you can take uh, a strong uh, telescope or a pair of binoculars or a p1000 camera and pull things back into focus we used to do that when i was in the navy like we were in the middle of the pacific and you could see stuff going away but you pull out the giant binoculars and there it is again so if it's going over the curve is the vision of your binoculars also going around the curve too or is it going straight light doesn't bend so therefore uh, water is always level. No matter where you are, water is always level and flat. Uh, how many how many miles of flat does it take to make a curve? Um, I've never seen water stick to a spinning anything. Uh, gravity at 20 and 2024 is still a theory. There's a lot of things like that just make now, me wait, question. Now, hold on. Now, gravity gravity is a theory, but theory means something different in science. Um, it doesn't mean that um, it's unproven. It actually is like one of the Gravity highest. exists. What is it? Nobody knows. Is it a push? Is it a pull? Is it actually density? Like, uh, is it buoyancy over density? Are we actually just too dense to float in the air? Because if, if gravity, how does a butterfly work? Right. If, if the gravity that well, can keep all wings. the water on the earth down, it, yeah, I understand that. I understand that. But like the, the weight ratio and all that kind of stuff, it shouldn't. Butterf uh, bees don't actually fly. Bees levitate. Their wings don't actually fly. The way that the bees, the way that bees work is so they actually fast. levitate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They actually levitate. No, it's a form of levitation. It's not like a, it's not like a helicopter. That's the other thing. Helicopters like defy the laws of physics, and that's just silly in and of itself. Um. So we have means of transportation that do de not de uh, defy the laws of physics. We also have things in science that defy their own laws of physics. You know, like you can't have uh, gas without a container, right? So how does the atmosphere stay on? Gravity. Okay, so if it's holding down the air, if it can hold down the air, keep the air in, how does a, how does a butterfly work? You know what I mean? It doesn't, it, it just doesn't. That's why balloons... When you fill them with helium, they rise up, right? Because helium is lighter than the rest of the air. It's less dense. We are more dense. You jump into water, you sink. You put a small balloon around your, your, you know, around your arms, water wings, and you're suddenly floating again because that is less dense than the water. It's the same thing with, with gravity. It's just buoyancy. Anonymous sent three dollars. You can stack artillery liquids has to on top of each other based the on their density. Uh, one right? one to hit its target. Because because we have a question here, uh, <laughs> and um, let's see, anonymous says long range artillery has to include the curvature of the Earth in their equation. They do not to hit it's a target. Okay. They do not. Coriolis is not real. They do not. Any any okay, YouTube well, tell me why sniper guy, because it does. There isn't one that doesn't account for that. If Coriolis was real, if Coriolis effect were, if the Earth was spinning at a thousand miles an hour, like they say it is. You could get in a hot air balloon and simply float, and the Earth should spin underneath you. You're not connected to anything. You are in the air floating freely. The Earth should spin underneath you. That doesn't happen. Coriolis, do, do they do, do these snipers? Owen Benjamin has a great cartoon. It's called the Coriolis Sniper. And it, it has a guy who's like accounting for Coriolis every time he makes a shot, and he can't he can't assassinate the guy because he has to keep accounting for the Coriolis. Coriolis, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, does, it doesn't exist. I've been to military sniper schools, and it doesn't exist. They don't teach it in the Navy. They don't teach it in the Army. They don't teach it in the Marines. It is a YouTube sniper bullshit thing that they like to tell people to make it sound so much cooler. They compensate for the curvature and the fucking spin, bro. They count for, they count for wind drift uh, and for drop. That's it. 
All right, now, Dingo is here. First off, Dingo, where you been, man? I messaged you a few times. I figured you were just busy, you know, and stuff. But uh, you have to unmute yourself also to talk because it's Telegram, so. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. So what's been going on? Are you here? Can you hear me? Fuck, I guess I hit mute twice, my bad. No, I said, yeah, I, I've been busy and shit, but, like, <clears throat> normally you message me on my Chipper Jones account on Telegram. Oh. Uh, but I've been mostly on my, I've been on my uh, Legend Shithead Telegram uh, account. Oh, okay, that's stuff. fine. I, I thought maybe you are mad at me or something. Um, But, uh, you know, I'm going to let you two guys talk. Whoa. I really shouldn't step away for two seconds, but I actually have to take a piss. And so I'm going to let Dingo start it. And then I'm going to join back in in like 120 seconds or less um, <laughs> and then continue. Does that sound okay to both of you guys? Sure. Yes. All right. Go ahead, Dingo. Okay. You owe me a fucking apology, Johnny, and I'd like to get it before we get started. Oh, I know. I did that on purpose. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You were genuinely being a cunt. and I, I was like genuinely being a cunt on purpose because I figured you were not. Anyways, I'm sorry, buddy. Okay, well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. I don't have anything else. So. There you go. You're welcome. I knew that was coming. Is that it? No, I'm just playing. All right, I figured that was it. Yeah, that oh, was shit, it. I've been driving with my fucking lights off, dude, for like two miles. It's dark <sighs> as shit. I didn't realize that. I just got. I just left the store, and I didn't have my lights on. Oh, my God. Okay, so since off. I apologized, you need, you need, and now that I did that, you have to tell me that I was right. About what? Now, every, other than the thing that I apologized for. Everything else. What'd you apologize for? For calling you stupid. That's not what it was. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. It, you, you said you called me stupid one more time. You, you gotta quit calling me stupid. No, I don't know what the fuck you're even talking about. I don't even remember that. The last time I came in your fucking Telegram chat, you literally started accusing me of being a fed. Now, wait, wait, no. wait, 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 wait. Wait, what? Wait, 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 wait. I just joined what? back no, I in. Did not. I just joined back in and only heard wait accused me of being a fed. That's all I heard. Yeah, I'm going to look at look that up right now. In yeah, which go chat? ahead, dude. I don't, I don't know right, the fucking paranormal shit. Now, Dingo, wait. Calm down. Um, I never accused you of being a fed. It was a fed-ish. Fed-esque. Something like that. Fed? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he don't, so okay, so it wasn't the thing that he said, but it might have been something close, but he's not sure because he doesn't yeah, remember. That's exactly correct. That's Jesus exactly correct. Christ, dude. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna give you the Jimmy Lee. I'm sorry. Okay. There you go. Okay. Well, you you're just like you you get so you're like a pit bull with a bone, and yes, that was a black river. You're like a pit bull with a bone. When whenever you just fucking like get so mad, you're mad at somebody else. Like if somebody if a third party comes into the room, it's like, hey guys, what's going on? You're like, fuck you, too, dude, dude. And like that was me, and I was you posted something about like something about TRS. It was like six months ago or something. I don't remember. Yeah, I was. posted something about TRS, and you came in and was like, "What the fuck is this all about?" That and I was bull, like, it, that, "That's bullshit." Firstly, you're attributing a wait, tone of voice wait, to a text, wait, that was, and that's not accurate. Dingo, let him finish. Listen, and then... I read things. I listen. I read things in my head how I think they sound, and that's how I thought it sounded. All right, it now, didn't now sound go like, ahead. What the fuck's going on here? <laughs> I no, was, you posted something. You were asking. like, I posted something. I posted something, and you jumped in and were like, "What the fuck is this all about?" Source, basically. I remember this now. No, I did it was, not. It was no, something about Striker. It was something about Striker. Okay, yeah, like I was, I, I at that point, I had been away from all podcasting and politics for a while. I still have, and I didn't. I legitimately didn't know what was going on, and so I was like, "What's going on?" Because I didn't know you. At that okay. time when I saw that, I had no idea you had a huge beef with anybody over there. I, so it was all new to me. Everybody knew. Yeah, especially people, especially people who have shows on their network. That's what I figured. Like well, I at figured. At that point, I hadn't posted a show in like five months or something like that. At that point, I was. That's fine. I I said I was sorry. And you, yeah, you were like, it's really suspicious that you end up in here. Just, no, just, just asking questions, just asking right. Questions. You put it. In the I wasn't the fed. That was see, you took that as me thinking you were fed. I just figured you were just like fishing for shit to go tell people. Oh, okay. I, I would never you accuse you of being like of working. all people. Of all people, you were like the lead. Stop it. You don't think I could get a job at the feds? You know, <laughs> I don't think I'm too dumb. No. Uh, do you want me to I actually that? don't, Dingo, but I, I don't mean I that. I could totally be a fed. 
I mean, listen, could listen, be, I but totally like... be a fit. I mean, you're not, but like, yeah, no. I mean, if I wanted to be, I could be. Sure, sure. But that's not the best no, defense anyway. for what he's saying. But anyway, go ahead. Dream big, dream big, Dingo. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, no. Hell yeah. But I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess. Uh, I mean, fuck. I guess it's you know uh, all together we're taking the entire piece of the cake, all in one bite. Then yeah, I guess you were right. Yeah, it's all good, buddy. It's all good. That's all over I with do, now. I, we're still friends. I know. You're, I don't understand your obsession with nukes, but other than that, whatever. <sighs> like, why can't they be real? Because they. Don't do this thing where like, well, why can't it be? Because it's not. It's just because it's not. I, mean, I can't. T- I can't help you. It's like saying, you know, why isn't the tooth fairy real? I, dude, I can't help you with that. The tooth fairy isn't real. That's yeah. okay. I think that's a pretty gross straw man, but that's fine. We'll move past it. I'm just cool. saying. I can't. Like I, dude, we help, did help me get five episodes, fairy. four or five episodes. There's ten, at least ten hours, eleven hours of content on that. If you want to know why, go listen to that. Well, I couldn't listen to you in the last like eight months because I've been mad at you this whole time. Okay. Well, now you have a lot of content to catch up on. (laughs) (laughs) Now, do we disagree on anything TRS related? I don't know. I mean, they, 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 they fucked everything up. So, I mean, I don't care. Like Johnny could say that like they're all cross-dressers and they're downtime. I'm just going to be like, well, I don't know. Maybe they are. Fuck them. I'm not defending that shit anymore. Like they, they, you know, I've had a lot of time to think about everything since that happened. I was mad then. I mean, I'm still mad, but like, I'm more sure now that at who I'm mad at about who I'm mad at than I was then. I'm just fucking mad at all of them. Like you, for better or worse, you cock suckers. You ended up in a role where a lot of people looked up to you and you put on the jacket of a leader and you fucked it up. Like imagine fucking it up. It's such a crucial time. At least Hitler was being attacked by the entire fucking world. Fucking faggots. You were fighting over Dingo, what? We're People on kick, by the way. And shit. Dingo, we're on kick. We're on kick. I just want to. I know. didn't know that. You should have told me that. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's it's all good. good. I just want to be clear. Go ahead. Careful. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, like 1940-something, Germany's brought down by the world. 2024, 23, TRS brought down by threesomes and degeneracy. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> In Telegram chats. Don't forget the Telegram yeah. chat. Just give me a And some electrician just going to work every day and doing his little podcast. Who's that? They were so mad at me for the longest time. Like, they spent so much time being mad at me on all their shows. It was so funny. Yeah, I don't I, I believe you. I don't, I don't remember that. But I, didn't, you know, I got to where I didn't listen to them for a while. Yeah. Again, I don't listen. I just get people send me the clips of everything. So it got to where I couldn't listen because Mike, like, my, I mean, Mike would have a there be a story about like nothing but a group of black people attacking or beating or whatever, like you know, uh, sexually assaulting some white woman or something, and somehow, somehow we're blaming like we're blaming only Jews for this. <laughs> we're not even blaming the blacks that did it. And it's like, how did what are, what are you retarded? Like, how do we get to that point? Sure. Jews do suck, I guess, right? They they suck, right? I only said I guess because we're on kick. I don't know what I can say. Yeah, I but guess. Like, but the blacks did the raping. Can we at least be mad at them too? For Christ's sake. Johnny, any response to that? Or... I mean, he's not, I mean, all the stuff he said is not wrong. Um, you know, but, but Mike was busy. He was too busy being aloof to have uh, found out about any of the problems that were being caused. And all the people who looked up to them, I mean, what do they want? They just... They were just, they got the friendship that they, 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 they paid for, right? I don't know, dude. The whole, the whole thing, at the end, the whole thing coming out that it was just, they really just wanted fake jobs. Yeah, you know, no I mean, the most important thing they were doing was the networking thing, like white people meeting each other and like having a, um, you know, having a group of other white people that know what's going on that you can relate to and talk to and have like, you know, you can be friends with without having to watch the uh, transgender actor in the new Disney movie and swallow it without saying anything, you know? Like, right. that's what it was all about. And right. that's what they ruined. And that's what pisses me off, dude. Like, over mm-hmm. what? Well, what do you think it was over, Johnny? I mean, what? Do you, well, what was over? The fact that they... I mean, over what? He said over stuff? what? Yeah, I mean, what? They, what? Yeah, they, they ruined all that. I mean, over their job. I mean, they, they, they did that. I mean, they, I don't know. I don't know why they ruined the, the network. They built the network of stuff. That's how I actually met people 
I met I met people in California on the five hundred forum back in twenty fifteen. No, twenty fourteen, late twenty fourteen, when I got on the, the forum, I met I met the group of guys. It was Nathan Domingo's group and Jazz Hands actually, and uh, I met them because the forum. That's how I got involved with all this, you know. And everybody was there were people that were contributing content. There were people that were just you know doing chatting with each other. There were people that were getting groups together. And then all of a sudden they started doing the, the TRS mania where they had like the big national meet meetups, right? They had one big national meetup and then another one. And then they decided to do the paywall and they started, you know, their content was now their job. And that's when it turned a little, I mean, it started to get different. And then Stryker came along and then along hmm. came Charlottesville. And like, it was just like a, I don't know, one thing after the other. And, and then uh, they went, they went all political. You know, there was, it always was kind of politics, but it was Opie and Anthony with the dash of more politics. And then it was completely politics. And then they started the NJP and then it was, dude, it was just a snowball from there. Like now I'm going to ask this controversial, controversial question. You don't have to answer if you don't want, uh, but were both of you at Charlottesville? I wasn't cause I was in jail. Um, I was. I was. I'm not fucking afraid to say it to anybody. Like even in real life, like right. well, I still that's... brag about like the the face shot, not the face shot, but like the big huge center photo that I got on Fox News. It was like they were playing it everywhere. I was like, that's me. And you can't tell because I have my goggles and my my mask on and my helmet. <laughs> but like my family, they just you could see my eyes in that photo. My family was like, oh my god, that is you. Not yeah. to mention I have the backpack and the helmet and everything from the picture. But hell yeah, I, I was there. There's nothing wrong with being at Charlotte. No, I have the worst picture of all time, though. Me standing. That's true. The, you were there. You were there too, though. Okay. I was on the fucking poster, dude. I was. Well, see, fuck. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just trying to learn. I'm the host. Like, I yeah, I was supposed to listen. I had a, <clears throat> I had a speech all prepared for and talking about how it was all about communism, like how it was, literally it was about communism and how communism comes to town and it's always about taking statues down and changing your history. And I had. I had different examples with like South Africa and Zimbabwe, or Rhodesia and Soviet Union and China. And then we didn't get to do the thing. But anyway, yeah, there's the picture of me standing there next to the van and David Duke is like hand outstretched, <laughs> like pleading with the camera. And I, the look on my face is like, just get in the fucking van. <laughs> he just won't shut up. He wouldn't shut up. And that was usually it's me that doesn't shut up. Uh, that was the thing that like when I got back to San Francisco, like everybody had that picture of me and they were like, this motherfucker. <laughs> Dude, and I got I basically was like physically attacked. You know, I was I was had a groups of of black guys come up to me and like, yo, it is you? I mean, clearly it's me, bro. Like, yeah. And then uh somebody found a podcast where I had said a few of um untoward words. <laughs> words that we're not allowed to say on words that we're not allowed to say we're on, on kick. kick. Yeah, 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 we're on kick. Right. We're on yeah, kick. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I've said a few. Look, look. Everybody said a few things. Uh, the the podcast was called the Alt Right Rises. Remember that, Dingo? Oh yeah, remember I remember that? the Alt Right Rises. Yep, I was on that, and um, yeah, they found that episode I was on, and it was just bad. it was bad for me from then on out. So yeah, I was at Charlottesville, dude. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with being like so. At well, no, no, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying was... wait, wait, wait. I'm saying you both say you were there do you mm -hmm. regret going not even a little now bit. now absolutely yes absolutely uh, now that i know what everything was uh if in fact people that i was involved with were in fact were, whether they were or were not involved with actual gay ops is not 100 percent provable but highly likely um i don't think they were and i think that if they if they if there was even an eight of enough evidence for somebody to make that claim reasonably, you would do it, and you haven't. Well, like, you you know that you, that says. But something. the thing is, is I have. I mean, looking at a lot of things, like now I was in the middle of it, dude. So like being in the very middle of it, you can't see shit. But now being on the outside of it and seeing certain things, Mike not being at the torch rally, uh, <clears throat> Jo was the guy who brought David Duke. Um, Jo is the one who's got. You What's know, wrong with David Duke? Well, David Duke, David Duke is an automatic well poisoner. Uh, David Duke being there automatically made that thing the KKK rally, even though there wasn't a single KKK person like that. If there were or not, David Duke being there, David Duke 
putting his name behind a candidate for anything automatically poisons that guy's uh, political career. It just automatically does because of the of what he represents to the normie American. He's the he's yeah. the grand dragon of the KKK. That's what um, we were trying to change, though. Like, yeah, bro, the, bro, hang on. I'm going to stop you right there. You're no, you're not changing that. You're not changing that perspective in the United States. You're not rehabilitating Hitler. Have you seen my you've seen my library? I have read. I have four different translations of of the comfy chair. Uh, I, you, okay. It's not being rehabilitated, not in the United States. I, there's, yeah, it's no, not that's being fine. Like, I, I get it. That's, that, that's saying – it's a lot different saying that right now than it was in 2017. Oh, I, we I understand that. I was there. I was, the guy, I was the guy at the first TRS Lomania. You remember? Do you remember Adios Mi General at the end when they used to do the Sig Heils at the end? Uh, no. I don't know anything. I don't know what Sig Heil means, but go ahead. Yeah. There's a, there's a, it's no, a, no, you know, no. I'm kidding, but I, I don't yeah. know what that means. But yeah, go ahead. Right, right, right. But there was, I mean, dude, that was the kind of stuff that they did. Anyways, yeah, that, that being said, David Duke being there was a terrible idea. It was a terrible idea. Look at instantly. As soon as I saw him, as soon as I saw him, I knew it was, it was a, things were going to go south. Couldn't as soon as I saw him, I was like, from being there, though. Like, he just kind of came. No, he didn't just come. J.O. brought him there. He didn't just show okay. up, dude. Well, J.O. Either, either way, I don't think no. that's like evidence of a gay up, though. I don't think, and I, bro, you know. it's not evidence. It doesn't necessarily have to be evidence of a gay up. David Duke was involved in the uh, attempted takeover of a fucking island country in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the Caribbean at one point, dude. So, I mean. Okay, I don't, even, I don't know anything about that. And I feel like exactly. we don't have enough time to even go into it. So I'm just going to take your word for it. Fine. That's fine. It's weird that that's he fine. was there in the jail brought it. Good enough. But I wasn't yeah. at the torch torchlight rally either. You want to know why? Why? Because I'm retarded and always late, and I missed my fucking flight in Baton Rouge, and I had to drive to New Orleans in the rain, which made me two and a half hours late, like later yeah. than I would have been. And so, I mean, that would be really convenient if if I were an influential person at the time, which I wasn't. But, like, it happened. Or now. Like, why wasn't Mike there? What's that? I said, like, why wasn't Mike there? You know, like, I was there. I wasn't there for a good reason. Like, maybe was there a good reason? Right. He, he, just didn't, he, just, he, just, he just didn't want to go. And what, was the, what does it matter if he was there anyway? Like, why, uh, why is that weird? The amount, of, the amount of people's faces that were, like, taken in that lighting and in that so many people's faces that got doxxed because of their, the torchlight rally. A lot. What would him yeah. be in their change? I'm, dude, I don't want to. We're not doing this right now. Okay. okay I know I'm you're, asking. I'm just I know asking. you're still I'm not arguing. What is that? Why does it's just very convenient? Uh, the picture of Mike in the vehicle, uh, where it appears that there is an AR 15 across his lap, it's not. Uh, and when Mike gave that message beforehand that disappeared, uh, it was only up for a couple of hours where he said, You know, uh, we have the permission of the police and uh, just bring whatever you feel you need to bring to be safe. Which, I mean, you're not retarded. I I yeah, I don't. I, I don't. I didn't say anything. Doesn't mean anything. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know. You know. I people aren't something stupid. very different than that, though. You, like, I mean, and I'm not trying to be argumentative. Just have a conversation with me. What, what do you not, remember that's so different? I'm not an atomic bomb, Johnny. Like I'm a real person. Just no, wait, I get that. Come I, on, I, come no, on. Hang on. You're, don't. You're you're too much like me. You just no. You're doing the, the thing, but you see, but come the thing on. is, is you're doing that thing. That's that's I'm not. that's not cool. You are. You literally just did. That was like unnecessary. The atomic bomb. I'm not an atomic bomb, Johnny. Yeah, it was a yeah, fucking, on, it was a joke, on. asshole. Like, come on, be, be I'm to, no, joke. listen, you can't do that. Where you're like, we're having an actual serious conversation where like allegations and things are being made and you know, and suspicions are being like put out there and whatever. And then you want to make a stupid joke in the middle of it. And, and, like, come on, that's not cool. It was a joke aimed at you, like not getting mad while talking, not saying that you're a fucking crazy person. So just listen to me, for fuck's sake, okay? I won't make any more jokes, Johnny. All right, no more jokes. The, but like you're missing the point, is, Ralph. He's missing. No, the point. no, no, no. I want to keep stay on this fucking thing. Right, so what I remember about that is like he at first he um he explicitly said a lot of times. And don't get me wrong here. Keep in mind, please, that I fucking hate this guy now. And like I really, I really do. I, he dropped the ball in the worst way, and I've lost all respect for the guy. And I, I would kick him right in the dick if I could, to be quite honest with you. But what I remember truthfully is that he told everybody multiple times leading up to it, like. Absolutely, do not bring any um, words that start with a W and end and in rhymes with happen. He said, "Don't bring anything, 
He said, if you carry a knife to cut open cardboard, don't don't bring that, blah, blah, blah. And then Antifa started talking about, like, oh, we're going to use this on them. We're going to use this on them. Well, here's the weapons we're bringing. And then the cops started finding, like, cached stashes of, you know, like, shit to hurt us with that Antifa put there. And Mike was like, well, look, I, I can't in good conscience tell anybody, absolutely don't bring this, that, or whatever, now that we know what we know. So I'm just going to say, bring what you legally want to bring and don't be retarded. Like, that's what I remember, and I remember it clearly. Okay, that's exact, pretty much exactly what I said. It's not. I, just, but I forgot contact. about the Antifa part before that. Whatever. He shouldn't have said anything. He should have said, you shouldn't tell anybody to bring anything at all. If you're, it, dude, if you're a leader of anything like that, and you tell people, well, you bring whatever you think you need to bring. Like, dude, that clearly to these people that you know. <sighs> yeah, okay, but I'm, okay, fine. Just, I'm all I'm saying. I, it's dude, nothing, that is, bro, that, that is. To me, that is to me. Luckily, luckily, now I was told by by people that were there that the reason why there were so many cameras at, at the parking garage was because there was supposed to something happen there, and people didn't get there in time, and that part of the thing didn't happen, which you know uh, could have been bad for a lot of people. This is what I, from what I understand that there was. There was supposedly uh, an op supposed to happen with uh, people with um, certain kinds of helmets. But anyway, that they didn't realize, 90% of them didn't realize that that was the thing. I don't know. I don't know that that's true or not. I, the kind of a hearsay thing, but it would explain the amount of media presence that was at that place for no fucking reason. Like there was no reason for there to be six news cameras and a helicopter at that parking garage when everything was like five blocks away. When all the real stuff that was happening was five blocks away, just kind of odd. Um, but luckily, that didn't happen, and all that was there was that DeAndre, whatever, and uh, what's his face, the old bald guy with the flag. He was one of the League of the South guys. He got his head cut open, or no, yeah. there's another guy. Oh, the other guy. Oh yeah, that was Action Hero, who who got his head cut open and then he got stitched up by McNabb while David Duke watched. Yeah, such a and then fucking that, that weird day. The League of the South. Remember the hematoma on that guy's head, the, the League of the South guy? Yeah, the guy with the, the guy that got hit with the flag with from DeAndre, whatever the hell his name was. It was a mag light flashlight. Yeah. Fucking that was flashlight. the same guy that was made. He had had he had made like a hairspray uh, flamethrower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, that was yeah. a different black. He was with him. No, the other guy was with him. They were together. Yeah, yeah they they were together. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I'm yeah, sorry, I got my blacks I confused. It's not. It's not hard. <sighs> it. I know. I grew up they in Hartford. All, they I all sound alike. <laughs> they all sound no, they alike. no, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. I know. But uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I think that I think there's plenty of blame to go around for those for those people over there. Um, they I did, think, I but think, I mean, I think they did some good stuff in the beginning, and I don't think Charlottesville was one of the bad things that they did. I, I genuinely uh, don't feel like they had nothing to do with that. Anything do. that went wrong there. Okay, I that's do. fine. We can just, we can agree to disagree. We can agree to disagree on that. But, do you think January six was an op? A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, okay. It, so it, if January 6th was different. an op, hang on. If January 6th was an op, so is Charlottesville. I, I, I think that's absolutely insane to say, dude. I mean, they couldn't be more, are, much more different than they were. Are you, are you serious? I'm a hundred percent serious. The so, like, biggest January white 6th, nationalist network, the, the, the biggest people, white nationalist network with the most amount of people listening and whatever put together or something like that. They totally took over that thing from, from fucking Kessler. I mean, whatever. That's fine. Like, I mean, Kessler, come on, man. I mean, I know you don't want to okay, believe that, but like, no, 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 no. Listen, dude, you don't just, Listen, I'm not like we're not on the paranormal. He's like you're not the host. We're both equally guests here right now, so I'm just okay. we're gonna talk back and forth. So like, well, the difference to me between January 6th and Charlottesville are very stark. And so like you had Nick Fuentes and you had these other people January 6th encouraging people to go. You even had the president encouraging people to go to this place that those people then did not show up at, and then they left the people that they just encouraged to go there holding the bag. A lot of them got arrested. A lot of them are in prison. Okay. Actually. We all know it's that a different the op, people, dude. It's a the different people, people of the people that unite the right who were helping organize it. They were all there. We were all there together. Like, any sure. And what happened to all of them? Like, what happened to anybody? What happened to anybody? Mike got excused for being annoying. Mike got excused because he was so annoying with his fucking uh, asking for discovery. That's not how it works. You don't beat no, Roberta Kaplan. Yes, it is, bro. I was there. Johnny, I, I don't want to have to be like the guy that's dude, like, but that's not what happened. Stop it. I was there. That's I was not there. Okay. Stop. Whatever. Fine. Okay. Stop. But how are they similar then? How are they similar? They're, they're, they're they similar. don't have to be similar to be ops, dude. Every op doesn't have to be the same. 
No, it doesn't. That's not how it works. That's January not how it works. Was one. January sixth. Listen, hang on. The uh, the it goes like this. Charlottesville got all got all the Trump supporters that were racist, Nazi, Klansmen, whatever, right? All your nationalists, all your anti-communists, all the scary, the mean, the evil ones, right? Boom. January sixth was all your maggotards. Different kind of op. All your conservatards, all your 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 pro-Trump guys, your your all the, that's what that was. The, the first one, there's no, of course the president's not going to tell people to go to Charlottesville. Charlottesville was something that was put together by these, it was unite the, the dissidents, right? It wasn't to unite the right, like the Trump people and the DeSantis people and the, and the, the, the Texans that follow what's his face. The, 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 the Zodiac killer, Ted Cruz. Um, like, no, man. Another like, another difference you, to you? like, here's another very stark difference between the two. Okay. Um, Think about Ever. this. Just think about it for a second. Just like stop trying to interrupt everything I'm saying and just listen to me. So like at Charlottesville, what happened? What was the state response? They shut us the fuck down quickly. They tr trampled all over our First Amendment right, and then they made us leave, and they let us get attacked by Antifa, but they didn't let us do what we were there to do. At January 6th, the cops were like opening doors for people. We Like that That happened multiple <laughs> times, right? They let them in the, they let them in the oh. Capitol building. And then because it's not the same, because it's not the exact same, that means that one can't be. No, Dude, it's stop. Not I'm done with this conversation. I'm done with this conversation. Different. I'm done with this. I'm not going to have this conversation. This is, I can't Tony, believe you're it. You're not even participating in the conversation. Yes, I am, bro. It. Well, yeah, the, 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 this one, the cops were against us, and this one, the cops were for them. Dude, don't you know how yeah. they don't have to work the same way? This is, this is hurting my brain. No, but like it kind of shows what the goals are of the of the other side, wouldn't it? Like they didn't want us to do what we were there to do because it would have woken people up. If it we didn't, were just no, it wouldn't have woken people up. They would have squelched the fucking news shit anyways, bro. None of that shit would have made it on it. There was a, like how many hundred thousand people were in were in uh, were in D.C. when the Gaza thing first popped off, and according to the media and everybody in the United States, there wasn't a protest because they blacked it all out. Dude, the media can do whatever they want to do with these things. If they want to make, if they want to make a five-man protest the biggest thing on the news, they will. That's how they got okay. hate. They, um, they, okay. I'm just saying, dude. Like, it doesn't you have to be the same off. Okay, so let me ask you, you this. Let me let, let me break this up. How could it have been done better? How could it have been done better? Yeah. Um, if people who were actually in charge uh, were actually like, you have Richard Spencer, Mike Enoch, uh, who else was, was the, the guys? None of those guys are like real people. Richard Spencer is off being a libtard, a Biden supporting libtard right now. His whole family is like that. You know, Mike Enoch's family was all career uh, liberals and whatever you want to say about them, career academics and liberals. Like none of those guys are qualified to lead any sort of political rally movement any of that kind of stuff for especially on the right so maybe with people who are actually genuine having people who are genuine looking at knowing what you know now looking at mike enoch mike enoch was just trying to keep a he was going to get the paywall he had the paywall going he was you know needed to get people to pay for his uh, his fake job Right? I mean, uh, that's what Jesse said. It was all so that they could have their fake job. So including Charlottesville? I mean, how much of it was fake? How much of it was real? How much of it was kayfabe? How much was it actually real? I think none of it was real. Well, I mean, I, that's... I, I spent that's a lot of time differ. in I person with these people. Real. Like, I, think I spent a lot real. of time in person with these people, dude. Yeah, exactly. And, like, you're you're telling me you were duped that whole time, Johnny? Come on, dude. Like, I spent... It, not, it, look, stopped, dude. it stopped being real at some point. We agree on this. But I just don't see how you're... you're going to claim that if January 6th was an op, then so was Charlottesville. They differ in every way that the government response was different. The media response was different. The people who organized it, their involvement in the thing was different. Everything was different. It's not that they're not exactly the same. Nothing was the same. Okay, I'm, I, I don't know why that has to be such a point. I don't know why it doesn't have to. Dude, we can agree to disagree on this as well, okay? Okay, fine. Good. All but right. what's true is, yeah, what, what's right is you were absolutely correct. I mean, I think Sven even said it himself. He just wanted to, you know, this to be his job because he didn't want to get a real job. And like, yeah. that's what it became at the end. And that's. No, that's what know, it became like, always. That's what it became always. Mike has, Mike has never had a job. I think all of his jobs in tech have all been because of his mom, who his mom knew and stuff. Like, he can't code. Look at his website, dude. It looks like a fourth grader's fucking computer science project. It's terrible. He's a coder. He's terrible at his job.
Okay. Well, I, I, I believe you. I don't know anything about coding either. But. Dude, look at. Go, he just, literally just said he couldn't code. Website, code yeah. <laughs> yeah. His website, dude, it's terrible. And it's been that way for years. And Jesse is content to have his content on that shitty website that supposedly pays his bills. If he was really interested in his content paying his bills, he would want his website to be something that would grab you and make you want to listen to their content. Their website is garbage and everything is by paywall. So they clearly don't really care about the monetary aspect of it, really. Um, Jesse's never had a real job, dude. He worked at his dad's paint store and he worked at Guitar Center in California. Those are the only real jobs he's ever had. He was a self-employed house painter. That's like the lowest of the low of non-union trades work. Like usually guys with prison fucking uh, records or like that kind of thing. You can't get a real job. So you're like a self-employed house painter. He didn't even I'm have a business gonna, card, dude. I'm not going to shit on somebody's like work, but whatever. That's fine. Dude, I'm just saying. They've never had real jobs in their lives, and they didn't want real jobs. So they, you know, I guess if, if, it was, if it was, you know, hey, you guys do this and go along with this, and you get to keep all the money that you make, and you can pay yourself, you know, like... Who knows? Who the fuck knows? Dude, they started off as like a libertarian thing, recruiting people on Facebook, and then they moved into the right wing. I mean, you just kind of follow their trajectory from 2012. Uh, it's pretty interesting, you know, and see what like what Mike was doing for a living and stuff. Uh, it's just it's a very you know if you look at it from from that, not just from the fact that you know you were on the network or whatever, but yeah, I mean, it seems that thing. this this thing could have been you know could have been some sort of a corralling type op. And a lot of people got in a lot of trouble. A lot of people lost a lot of jobs. A lot of people lost a lot of family members and friends. A lot, a lot of people are socially distanced for real because of being associated with those people. My entire family, my entire family doesn't talk to me because I'm Johnny Monoxide. On one yeah, side of my family. I, mean, I understand that. I totally you know? that. I mean, so that's if that is part of it, dude, if you don't think that the demoralization op is on and that the humiliation rituals happen on a daily basis in this country in every aspect dude every aspect of trs and njp is a humiliation ritual at this point anybody who gave them money you have to be embarrassed dude like i'm embarrassed to have been associated with them for as long as i was well, it's embarrassing yeah, that's cool. the, stuff like, I, the thing the thing i think about like what, what you just said about the off the whole time or them not wanting to get a real job thing my thoughts on that are i guess a little different i don't end up at like it could have been an off the whole time but like, here's my opinion on it if they want it to be like a right-wing media thing and make that their real job in the midst of uh, a right-wing, you know, up, not uprising, but like a mental awakening in the country, upswing. which I think is what we were going through, right? Yeah, upswing. Like if they want it to be the, the, the big, you know, uh, funny talk show that makes money off of that talk show during that yeah. political swing, fine. That's perfectly fine with me. I think that we should aim – to, to be uh, a movement that can support things like that, like red eyes, that you know, was what it was things supposed that do to be. Things. Right, but whenever they put on the jacket, uh, not not they, I guess, because Finn didn't really ever want to do this, but the rest of them did. Maybe maybe not McNabb either, but like when they put on the jacket of, okay, I'll lead you guys, that's where they fucked up because it wasn't like really in their fucking um, plans, apparently, to be good leaders because like look at them, you know, the proof is in the pudding. They're garbage <laughs> yeah. leaders, and they fucked it all up. So, like, they 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 allowed people to follow them, and they said, yeah, I'll do it. And they were never fucking capable. And, and like, whenever you're dealing with something that important, if you're not capable, don't fucking get up. You know, if you can't hit the curveball, motherfucker, don't ask the coach to put you in as a pinch hitter. You know? Like, right. people have asked me, like, well, why, why don't you lead, do this? Why don't you do this? And I'm like, because I can't lead shit. Like, I'm scatterbrained. I've got two kids. I don't sleep with, like, four or five hours a night. I can't, wanna, lead, I can't lead shit. And I never you want to know what else they did? You know what else they did besides putting on the jacket of leaders? They pushed people out that had leadership skills. They had, they had actual political leaders, people who were actual uh, movers and shakers in the political world in actual politics. And they pushed them out. Uh, guys who were, like... I'm not bragging, but like I, I am the boss all the time at work. I've been, a, you know what I mean? People who know how to run people, whether it was to coordinate events or do this, they would put a woman, the singular woman in charge of something, you know, Wolfie half the time. And then that ended up being a bad business thing. Like everything they did just turned out to be a bad decision. I just don't believe that. that and you got to remember that Mike's mom was very close with Hillary and the DNC. This whole thing could have been a fucking DNC op, dude. You got to think about that too. 
It's not like they don't do this shit. The CIA does stuff in every other country, but here in this, you know, in the United States, the CIA has only done stuff in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Nobody's ever been prosecuted, but they've stopped. They don't do it anymore, so don't worry about it. Right? No, dude, we are the most psyoped population on earth. We are the most psyop population on earth, the American. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. We believe that all of our history is 100% factual down to the fact that George Washington actually chopped down a cherry tree. We believe that is gospel truth. And if you deny that, you're not American. That did happen, though. Stop. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I know. Kidding. I know. I know you're kidding. But like, no, I know you're kidding. I know you're kidding. But you know, but that's the thing. We've been so psyop, dude. So psyop in this country, and it's and it's every day. It's every day you get up. It's a new psyop. Every day it's something else. And it's like like with this the, the Vince McMahon fucking sex trafficking scandal. That's just new update of old story that's not so flashy anymore. Yeah, who cares? You know, it, uh, who cares? No, I know. But like, it's Vince also, McMahon, did anybody doubt he was up to some fucking like weird shit? Yeah, like, exactly. That's right. the thing. Is like I was kind of like I was. I would have expected him to be on the Epstein list, but like not to have his own thing. But then thinking about what he has down there in in uh in down there up out there in Connecticut. You know he's got it. He's got a network. I mean, of course, of course they're going to do that kind of stuff. Um, but whatever. But it's just. But that's just what I'm saying is that's just an update to another story that's happened a hundred thousand times. It's that's like the dead internet theory, right? They just rehash the same story with different characters. It's the same. There's only like how many how many movies they say there's so only so many movie plots. There's like what eight stories or something like that. There's the hero. There's the this. There's the that. It's just different variation of the, the eight father. stories. The what? Yeah. I said the redemption of the father, but yeah, I mean, like that's, you know, that's, I don't know. I think that's just kind of uh, intrinsic to like human. Yeah. Um, I think there's something to that, but I think there's something to the cyclical nature of everything that in general. Now, how but, can things be done better in the future? How can things be done better in the future? Uh, well, one thing that was never done is nobody vetted the vetters in this thing. Nobody vetted the people that were vetting you. You know, nobody vetted the people that were vetting me. Like, I remember when the Manor Bund first started up and people were all excited. I remember like Coach Finstock was like, oh, I got into the Manor Bund. I had to get vetted. I'm like, bro, you're fucking Coach Finstock. Like you, you host, you were on the Fatherland, one of the very, you know, one of the best parenting podcasts, you know, one of the, the only, you know, a great dad podcast from the back in the day. You host Full House. It's a parent. Everybody knows who you are. You're the the head of the of the DC pilots, you know, pool party. You've been, you know, you have to get vetted. Yeah, man. It's you know, they just want to make sure. I'm like, you should join and you should get vetted. I'm like, I'm not getting fucking vetted for a group of people I already fucking know. But <laughs> But who, yeah, because who's vetting these guys? Like, who vetted Mike and Sven? Who vetted J.O.? J I guess Mike did or whatever. But, like, who vetted the guys at, at the top? Who vetted Richard Spencer? Did anybody know that Richard Spencer's parents are really good friends with the Bushes? That doesn't mean anything to anybody? Like, these people who are related to these people are related to all of these ops. Jim Morrison's father was the guy who ran the Gulf of Tonkin fake op. Like, wait, you think they just stopped doing that in the 60s? Henry Rollins, Jesse's best bit. Oh, my Henry Rollins bit did more for white people than anything. Shut up, first of all. Um, second, nobody knows who Henry Rollins is anymore. And third, Henry Rollins' dad is a Jew who was in, uh, a lawyer in D.C. He was very influential. So, you know, I don't, there's I don't not... know who Henry Rollins is, and I don't know the bit he's talking about. That's okay. Henry Rollins was the singer in Black Flag, a very influential founding member of the punk movement. I've never even heard of Black Flag. Like, this all just That's okay. Like You're from... shit to me. It's, it's punk. It's old. Yeah, that's gay. From the 80s and 90s. Yeah, it's old. But no, it's gay. I know Henry Rollins, but I actually had no idea why I knew him. <laughs> <laughs> because that's like, the thing. I, he was famous. Yeah. He had the he had he had the uh he, had, he was in Black Flag, then he was in Rollins band, and then he started doing talking stuff, and now he looks like an old lesbian on the history channel. Uh, he does okay. he does Maybe like he does like history, does like history stuff. He does like history stuff. He's he's a famous ex rocker. So, but anyways, know, like here's where I think we went wrong, Johnny. If you want, if, if you want to know, by the way, sure. like I don't, I don't necessarily think. I mean, I really don't think that all of this was a gay op from the beginning. Like, well, I think that the gay op really took full effect after Charlottesville, and in my in my mind, it was Fuentes and it was Anglin. Both of these people immediately, right after Charlottesville, they obviously disavowed, and then they turned they turned the whole narrative from 
Like, look what the government just did to all these white people wanting to protest about a statue removal. Look what they just did to them. That should have been the narrative that we ran with, but we didn't. What What did we do for the next year and a half? Fought over the optics debate, and then the, the word wignat came into it, and that changed everything. And who came up with that bullshit, dude? Like, I mean, who ran with that bullshit? England, the same guy that was like, oh, women need to be breeding stumps. That's where you cut off their arms and legs and just fuck them until they pop a baby. You know, like, just stupid, controversial shit out of nowhere. That did nothing but make everybody in fight. And that's, to me, the the crack that started the windshield breaking, if you will forgive my terrible analogy. But, like, now we're just a bunch of factionalized groups of 10 calling everybody else feds and gay ops. You know, that's where that's what we are now. And then I look at the day of Charlottesville. We were the opposite of that, dude. It was great. Charlottesville, like, it was, I loved it. Like, I mean, obviously a lot of bad shit happened, but, like, the the mood, the atmosphere, what we were. We were just white. That's all we were, and that was enough. And now, fuck yeah, we're white. But like, so what? You know, nobody cares anymore. Uh, you have to be a Groyper, a Christian nationalist, isn't that? You have to be a fucking I don't know. We're just factionalized, and we don't cooperate, and we'll never get anywhere like this. And whenever I say like, okay, when was the last time it was good? What happened in between? How did it start? I see two people that I fucking hate, and that's Fuentes and Angle. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but uh, you can't have what happened after Charlottesville. Uh, the infrastructure there was already there. That infrastructure was put into place a long time before Charlottesville. So, um, I guess, but like one could make an argument that like that nobody could have controlled the chaos of Charlottesville in at the present time, like in the moment. You could make an argument that that's not controllable, and I would actually go with that argument. But what you can make an argument for is that you absolutely can control the narrative after Charlottesville. And like, instead of running with what we should have run with, we turned on each other over what red shoes and fucking helmets on fat guys or something, you know, like that's what the optics war started over. Give me a fucking break. dude. I, I was never involved with any of that stuff. But um, the thing is, though, is that all this stuff, it wasn't just Charlottesville. Mike was the first person to throw a Roman at Heilgate at NPI. He's the only person on camera not being seen doing it, but he was the first person to throw the Roman. When 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 Spencer said, hail Trump, hail our people. Uh, Mike Mike jumped up and threw a Roman, and that's how that started. Um, that confirmed? This, yes, I, with people that were there. Yes. I never heard that. Okay, I mean, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not denying it. I'm no, it's 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 that. true. It's true. Yeah. It was, <laughs> okay. That was. There's a couple of other things. I mean, dude, I'm just like his mom's connection to the DNC is like by looking back at that. You can't deny that the DNC would do something like this, dude. Like put money into a gay op that would corral the far right, which they control anyways. Dude, who, like, what about, like, before before TRS, you had uh, Frank Cullen, Frank Cohen, Frank Joseph, right? The Chicago, or the American Nazi Party, right? And he was a Jew who ran that. Uh, Rockwell's right-hand guy was a Jew. That whole thing, like, honestly, I honestly think that the whole TRS uh, dissident right, alt-right thing was set up to make anybody who's pro-white look like a clown. I don't. I don't think. I that. do. I do. I do. I do. I that. That's okay. You don't have to think that. Yeah. You I were one of the people that was made to look like a clown, just like me. I don't feel like we were made to look like clowns. Yeah, dude. It, it when you when when large. I mean, it's not. It depends on how you look at. Because I don't care what what people think about me. But when like large portions of the population laugh at you because of something. And it's, like, well, it's not because you're a low cow. It's like that you went there and like you're just, or you're not, or they think a lot less of you because you're an evil racist piece of shit now or whatever, whatever, right? When, when, when you, when you constantly have to worry about, and I'm not, I don't care about that anymore. I did for a long time, you know, um, getting fired from jobs just because I was, you know what I mean? Yeah. That kind I'm of used stuff. To that by now. Yeah. yeah I, I, but right. But you're used to that. And I'm used to getting, you know, I'm used to getting, getting laid off for, for my docs and whatever. Um, I mean, I really don't care anymore. It's like, what, what, you're going to be mad about some shit that I said eight years ago? Like, shut up. But. Yeah, but I mean, like, it, on the other side of that, it's easy to say, like, oh, that was all set up from the get-go. But if there were a real, genuine, like, political shift and people right. started saying things differently like we were, it's mm -hmm. not, I mean, it's, it's absolutely in, in line to think that, yeah, you're going to get societal pushback, especially from. The, the old guard, which is what we got. So, I mean, just because pushback, that pushback happened, it doesn't mean... That wasn't pushback. That was a complete shutdown. That wasn't pushback. Well, that okay, was shutdown. 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 Fine, fine. And then, and then but like that's the thing, but they lead... You know, but they always the do government. It. Right, but they set up... Dude, they set these movements up 
with their own people every time. And every yeah, single time it turns out that these people are grifters or Jews or whatever. You know what I mean? It just I turns out think that, that, uh, every time. I think that Fuentes is one. I think Fuentes is paid by them. Look, I, I don't know. I, I'm sure I'm right. sure everybody that is still involved in, in any sort of movement at this point, if you're still in believing in any sort of movement, much as I hate George Carlin, but uh, his famous quote that he's like, look, if you believe there's a solution, you're part of the problem. That's, you, I mean, at this point, it is, dude, look at America. What are you going to take back, dude? What are you going to take back? We're getting flooded at the southern border on a regular bit, daily, thousands daily, right? We have rampant crime. We have, do we have, do we have tens of thousands of Somalis in Maine. This, yeah. this cities, the most beautiful cities that used to be some of the most beautiful cities on earth, Philadelphia, Baltimore, San Francisco. I mean, not recently, but you go back to like the early 1900s, the late 1800s, these cities were beautiful. And they are literally third world shitholes now. Okay. 100%. Yeah. There's no, there's no getting our people together. Out. What is our people? What I'll, is, I'll tell what, you. Like, I'll tell you what I think about that. What are you so gonna like, get? Look, three hundred and fifty-three million people, or whatever it is in this country. What are you gonna put together? Where and how? Yeah, sure. Okay, let me just answer that then. So, like, as far as the gay up thing being set up to fail, just to touch on that for a second, like, what sticks out in my mind is that at least with the TRS people, I don't remember anybody ever. Not once, like being docked from, you know, the, the pool parties or whatever you want to call it like that. It wasn't a big information leak, a bunch of names gone like that. That's been pretty secure. Right. That's why I don't think that it was just set up to, to take a fall and be made to look like a clown. But secondly, like what 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 can you save? What are our people like? You can control what you can control and you have to start with community building like you can't. You can't aim to just take back the entire country in one weekend, right? Nobody wants to do that. But, like, I look at South Africa, and I, I don't know if you ever met him or talked to him or not, but my co-host, Jack, um, he he came he, he came out with his real name a while back and started, like, you know, not a, not a political movement, a party, not a political party, but a political movement, if you will, like a group. And it's a bunch of white Boers over there, and they, they're trying to, like, set up their own economy. And they're doing actually um, – I was actually floored at what they're doing whenever I saw the extent of it. It blew my fucking mind. They have meetups, but it's not like meetups to talk about politics and that. It's just to be around each other. They have cookouts. Like his, um, he is set okay. up. He's saying, hang, hang on, hang on. Let me just hang on. Yeah, what, 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 what? So cookouts and all that stuff is all, is all well and good. Yeah, but, cool. I, but I'm it's not, I wasn't even close to done. But, okay. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead and focus on the cookouts if you like. No, but, I'm just like, saying, what like, what's your timeline they, of, of these people getting together and being able to form their own nation and being able to be a sovereign I don't people? Know. No, nobody, nobody has – I can't write down a revolution on a piece of loose leaf paper for you. I don't have a fucking clue, right? But what I do know is that there are over 300 people, like, that have put their name to, like, okay, I'm in this community. Now. And they're all white, and they're in South Africa, the most god-awful anti-white um, pro-black country on earth. And – they're helping each other and they're mm -hmm. actually fostering a community and it's growing and they have their own, I say their own economy, but they're getting there, right? Like they have these, uh, they started with like 50 sheep or some shit like that, <laughs> that Jack and his dad donated and they gave them to these different farmers. And so like the, the deal with like, okay, I'll give you these sheep. If you know, you're going to have to share a certain amount of the wool that come from these sheep. And so with that wool, uh, a lot of the women, uh, the wives of the people in Jack's group, they make clothing, right? And they fucking sell that to each other. They give it to people that need it, but they sell it to each other. They only buy from each other. I mean, they're kind of like fucking Mormons, not religiously, but the way Mormons are very nepotistic. They only do business with one another, right? And they they're securing themselves or putting them. Do they have their own currency? They they actually do have their own currency. You're okay. not gonna like this, but it's a cryptocurrency that they made, and Jack's brother made the app for it, and that's how they pay each other. So like. What I'm saying is, dude. If so the, where do if they the work? Motive, where, do they, the what do they do for there, where do they do for this? What, how do they earn this crypto? They they literally like uh, buy and sell stuff with it, or they just work for it. With each other, they buy and sell to each other, basically. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, it's very internalized. Yeah, you can't like just go take that to to a bank in South Africa. Right. Whatever. So they buy and but sell from each other, and they they their money is their own money, and it's only good there. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I mean, cool like, and all. That's cool and all. But like, you, you think they're gonna they're gonna do that in the United States? Let that happen in the United States? I mean, you, know, you think they're gonna, like like the weavers? Not, the weavers couldn't even buy property up in Idaho. I'm not saying that we need to do that. 
I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, like, Jack is a good man, a good white man, and he wants good for white people. And okay. that's all he wants. He doesn't want a job on the radio so he doesn't have to actually work. He okay. only wants to help white people. And I'm saying if there is if, if there's a motive there with a, you know, um, in a group of people and the person at the helm actually wants what he says he wants, which is good for white people, things like that will happen. And a year ago, you would have told me that that was impossible to have it in South Africa. I'm sure, and I wouldn't have disagreed. But it's happening, and it's great, and I love it. And I mean, that's cool. That is cool. Is, is it? Is it? It is an enclave right of 300 here. people. And that is awesome. How, however, if the ANC really wanted to, what what could they do? They're, they're, them. they're the communist government. They could do whatever. They're the fuck a they bunch of do. black people. At the end of the day, John is what they are. I. I <sighs> And see, and there's that whole thing about blacks have no agency ever, and nobody they can blacks well, can ever do anything. No, it's not that they don't ever. have agency. It's just that we have examples throughout history of how ineffective they are. Yeah, I, against, I, 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 I know the history. I know his, his okay, story. Okay, well, what are you saying? We're just no, I'm just saying that that's awesome until it's not. I mean, you know what I mean? Like well, then that's what, cool what do we do, and all Johnny? until then what do we do, Johnny? Bro, uh, you you can only do what you. That's great that they're doing it. I'm not saying not to do it, but what I'm saying is is that's not gonna that's not you're not, you're not going to change the system. You're not going to change the world. You're not going to change. You, you're not going to get, I mean, you're not going to have like a white ethno state in the United States. It's not going to happen. No, you know, you know might be able to have here. a cool neighborhood. You might be able to have a cool neighborhood, you know, somewhere that's, that's, until it's literally more than we have now. Right. Like what's wrong with, right. what's wrong with aiming for small steps first. Nothing is wrong with that. I never said there was anything wrong with that, dude. Okay. Well, I just said that that's, like you're... that's being doomed it's great, it. but like in the grand scheme of things, there's seven billion people on Earth, right? Three hundred people is not that much. When no, you're less not. than ten percent, when you're less than ten percent of the global population anyway, and there's an extinction plan out there for you, I mean, your time, your egg timer is running. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, you I know? mean, I get three hundred people. Like while that is awesome and that is great, I'm not denigrating that. I'm not saying that that's not awesome. And I, I do, I feel bad for everybody in, in South Africa that has to deal with that stuff and all the farm murders and all that stuff and all the shit they have to deal with, with Malema and, and, and the stuff before that. I, I get it. I get all that. But do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, what, what, no, I don't like what I'm hearing you saying is like, you can try to do this. You can try to do that. You can have the right people with the right motives, pure motives, but it still doesn't matter. And so I said, that's asking, great. Like, and that's great for those 300 people. And hopefully yes, that community, I'm, hopefully God, that community can survive. Point. What? I said, you're just completely missing the point here. Like, the point what? is, I mean, you just sound like we should just all give up. And I'm saying, no, I don't sound like we should all give up. I, okay, everybody, well, I've never do? said that. Everybody should be taking care of their family. Everybody should be able to grow their own, try and grow their own food uh, as much as possible. They should be able to uh, to be able to be self sustained as much as possible, uh, which is almost I mean, impossible for quite a few yeah, people. Exactly. That's the thing, that's dude. The silliest thing I've ever heard. Like, yep. you want to being talk able about, to take like, care of yourself. Most for most people, that's. It's absolutely absurd. It, it is. I mean, well, most people don't know how. Most people don't have enough land. Most people rent. They don't own. Like, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, so do something about that. Something You're gonna have, people are gonna have to do something about that, dude. Like, okay, yeah, making well, whatever a, they like, try, but whenever they try to do something about it, Johnny, you say, oh, well, it's only 300 people. Like, there's been over 100 people in South Africa move from the fucking that's city. That's not what I'm saying. So that's great, the, but that's only the 300. In the grand screen, scheme of things, right that's now, only 300 it's only people. 300. I know how many people 300 is, Johnny. I can count right. on my fucking hands. I get dude, it. Dude, you're getting like, mad for no reason, dude. dude I am kidding? getting mad, but it's no. not for no reason. Like, you're, you're, you're no, just dude. being no, very nihilistic. No. And you have no, no I'm you being no realistic. Sensible. I'm being, no and see, there's a difference. There's a dif this is what these no people do. See, Ralph, solution. that's what these people like, do. Everything is yeah, guys like Dingo, gentlemen, what, gentlemen, guys like Dingo, gentlemen, guys like Dingo, gentlemen, guys like Dingo, they do the same thing. You're going to say that I'm being nihilistic. I'm not. I'm being you realistic. Are. I'm not. I'm being realistic. What's the difference between What's nihilistic? I'm not saying there's no, there's no hope. Oh, we should give up. Oh, I never said any of that, dude. How could you be self-sufficient in some kind of, in some city in America? How? Get out of the cities. I've been telling people that for fucking 10 years. Oh, you could just walk out of the cities? You don't have to do anything? It's a lot more complicated than that, isn't it, Johnny? Yeah, it is, but do everything you can to do that. I'm sorry that you got stuck in a city. I mean, like, I was for it's a while. It's like you need a network of, I don't know, 300 people on farm. Uh, yeah. Yes, get together with people. Yes, I never said not to do that, dude. What is it? I'm just saying, you're coming Dude, right, this, no country, this country, no this country, this country. Hold on one sec. This one country sec. probably won't have another real election. You're not going to get, like, a real Republican candidate probably after this one. If there's a real election, 
right now let me ask you this right johnny so, your answer and then dingo your answer for for moving forward what for moving forward yeah uh if you're going to be involved with any of these big name groups don't uh but if you are like actually vet the people there like actually make sure that the people who you consider leaders are actual leaders make sure that they actually have um you know intentions of being leaders actually have qualifications to be leaders and if you start groups that's that's cool but joining groups of well-known things that have eh, i don't know about all that but definitely yeah definitely get together with your neighbor and make sure that you know people on your street are friendly or if you know if they're not maybe move all right, now Dingo, your answer. Shit, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like, what, what I do know is that like Trump is not the answer. Trump, Trump has been in on it from the very get go, and that's that's a fucking fact. Like the first thing the guy did when he became president was what? It fucking bombed Syria. Like the only people, not the only people, but like at the top of the list, people you shouldn't be fucking bombing. Like no reason to do that at all. But he did, <laughs> right? And at the end of his presidency, what did he do? He let a bunch of black rapists and Jewish financial criminals out of prison. Like that's yep. that's who that is, and he didn't do he didn't fuck everything up on accident. That's for fucking sure. He didn't let one local judge in Hawaii ruin the wall on accident. If that was Obama, he would have been like, "Well, I've got a pen and I've got an executive order." Remember that fucking quote? Obama yep. did whatever the fuck he wanted because that's the power the presidency has. Trump knew that, but he didn't use it. And if you think it was for PR reasons, you're a fucking retard. Trump is a <laughs> gay op for sure. That's what, and like he's you know that that's that's what I do know. And what I also know is like you should always, always try to look out for your own people. Um, like Johnny said, your own family for sure. Start there. But like it does matter that you're white and it does matter that other people are white. And you should try the best you very the very best you can to foster some kind of racial awareness in the people that you can. I'm not saying fucking go stand on the side of the street with a sign. Don't do that. You can't do that no more. It sucks, but you can't. But like, there's people that you can talk to about this stuff, and you should, um, because it's we're gonna have to start small, whatever it is. There's no doubt about that. There's not gonna be another chance for us to fucking have a huge microphone like it was in 2016. All that shit's over. Every time it happens, they learn, and it happened. And unfortunately, we had people put on a leader jacket that shouldn't have, and we dropped the ball. So I don't know. Whatever happens from here is gonna start small. But control what you can control, and hopefully we can build some kind of network where we can help each other if some bad happens, because that's really all that matters. Like the entire world, um, the entire non-white world, are outwardly proud of their hatred of us. And that, that's the world we live in every fucking day, and it makes me sick. And most people are just numb to it. I'm not numb to it. It fucking bothers me. And we need to do something, because like we're about to roll off the, the end of the waterfall. You know what happens whenever that happens? You go down really fast. So I don't know. I'm just I'm kind of worried about everything, but we'll see what happens. Well, we will. Three hundred people is a very big deal. We we'll see what happens. Now, any other um, you know disputes or, or or things you guys want to talk about? You know, I did kind of want to see more this Italian. <laughs> What's that? I want to know that. Who's more Italian, me or him? I'm only <clears throat> I'm only half. So <laughs> you fucking dago wop. I'm only a quarter. Holy shit. <laughs> so me. I'm a yeah, I'm a McDago. I'm half I'm half Italian, half <laughs> Scots Irish, and a little bit of French and German. Dude, that's like exactly mine, except for it's not half, it's a quarter. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, the, the, my mom's side is from Maine, upstate Maine, and they're Scots Irish and French and German. Oh my god, dude. I went to Maine one time and I almost cried when I had to leave. It was the most beautiful <laughs> dude, place I've ever we, been. We lived in Caribou, which is like I don't know, 10 minutes from Canada, the very northern part. Like Presque Isle is a little bit north of that, and then that's it. Um, my mom's family's from Fort Fairfield. They're way up there. And my mom married an Italian guy. And so we went up when I was a kid. My parents were still married. I think I was four. My parents got divorced when I was four and a half. So we went up to, to Maine to visit some people. And I remember my great uncle making fun of my dad for being Italian like he was a black guy. Like I, I distinctly remember that people in fucking <laughs> right, Northern Maine didn't see Italian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He'd be like, I had this shirt on and said, "Kiss me, I'm Italian." I distinctly recall my uncle Pete talking about. He'd see me and say, "Kiss me, I'm Italian." And I was like five and like scared of him. <laughs> he's, just, he's just make fun of that shit all the time. And he used to call me and my brother don't mutts. Yeah, I was gonna say don't. Uh, he called us mutts. <laughs> no, he used to call us mutts. Okay, okay, okay. 
<laughs> I was making sure. Oh, that's funny. He didn't use uh, I, another word. No, that was uh, the word he actually called us. We're not going to use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, it's kind of funny. Well, it's a pretty fun that conversation. And yeah. actually, I think the Shardsville stuff was was very interesting. Uh, both yeah. both the different takes on it. Now, I know it can only go so far, right? You can only talk about it so much. But, um, sure. But but I but I thought it was I thought I thought it was interesting uh, and there's people on both sides. Um, I just like, just like Donald Trump said, there's people good people on both. That's sides. That's right. There's good people on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people that I was like I was one of the good people. I was one of the good people. Donald Trump was talking about. What are you talking about? Look at my suit I was wearing. Of course I was one of the good people. I was the only one. Listen, I wore a suit. Those guys were clowns. Yeah, I mean I didn't wear a suit. That's that's, that's nobody gets that reference. I don't know. Get that reference. That was Caleb Maupin after the uh, the debate with with Strike and Mike, and he wore a suit to the debate. It was an online debate. He wore a suit, and his line was, "I wore a suit. Those guys are clowns." You don't remember that? Oh, I think I remember that. Yeah, I remember anyway. that. Yeah. Anyway, well, I'll, I now, want to say this. I've been wanting to say this, to Johnny, for a while. Okay, like, say it then. Yeah, Johnny, you are. I hated whenever you, you left uh, TRS just because at the time, you know, that's what I was listening to, and I hated that your show wasn't on there. But, like, you um, you are an untapped gem in my estimation, like, in my opinion. Like, you – I think that you have a lot to offer white people. And um, I think that if you ever put your mind to it, that uh, a lot of people would follow you, right, if you, want, if you wanted that. And I, <laughs> I think that you – you're going to think that this is like backhanded or something, but I swear to God on my life, on my kid's life, it's not. You you are worth more than just going through past gay ops and saying, like, look how much of a gay op this is. Like, you have a lot more to offer than that. And not a lot of people can – not a lot of people do have a lot more to offer than that, but you do. And I think that uh, it's a shame that you're not used and listened to and followed more than you, you, know, than you are. Well, I appreciate that, Ben. You're right. you're <laughs> I, no, I, honestly, I really, I really appreciate that. Uh, I think that's – and I don't want to sound like I'm tooting my own horn, but like when I was with TRS, anytime anybody had a dispute with me, it didn't matter. It was only online because anytime I was hanging out, everybody loves Johnny. That was like the thing. Larry used to tell people, Johnny's my favorite guy, right? And like yeah. everybody loves, like everybody loved me no matter what. And that was the thing is I'm a genuine person. I think everybody realizes that, you know? That was one of the things is like, you can only stay mad at Johnny for so long because he's just such a good dude. And I'm not trying to brag about that, but that's just how, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't, dude, I don't do anything to people. I never have, you know, but I, I really appreciate what you said there. And uh, I think that, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about all that. We'll think about that. Yeah, I mean, I just wish that you had the same goal now that you had like back in 2017. You know what I mean? Like, I think you're kind of more focused on obviously conspiracy stuff. That's kind of where your path led you. And that's whatever, that's fine. But um, I think that I wish that you weren't so like black build or whatever. I, and I say nihilistic, what I was talking about earlier, I guess, like, I wish that you had a different outlook than that because it just sounds like you're hopeless. And, um, cause you're one of the few people I think could make people hopeful, you know, and I wish <laughs> I'm that, not. Wish and that's that the whole thing is that. I'm not, dude, I'm not black pilled. It's like, I see through all the bullshit of all of it and coming together, like coming through these things that we have come through. Um, whether you believe it or not, like what happened to the people in Germany was basically like what we talk about on my show, like a reset. How many fucking Germans died as a World War II, right? They had to start over. Like something bad is going to happen here. Look at the look at this country. We're, something bad has to happen here. It's the only place on earth where like a real bad war thing hasn't happened that wasn't the Civil War, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know, dude. We're, we've got an entire army's worth of illegals inside our borders. Yeah. So, I, you know, something's going to have to happen. I think that... I mean, I, I honestly think that we are going to need community. I know we're going to need community, but building, but this whole movement stuff, this movement bullshit, this movementarian stuff, everybody want, you know, anytime that happens and it gets to be a certain point, it gets either it starts from the beginning and they'll tell you when they tell you themselves, we, when we need an opposition, we'll give it to them. And they lead the opposition, they lead, you know, or if they don't lead the opposition, they let somebody else do it, then they co-opt it. So it's, it's very hard looking at all the movements from looking at NJPTRS and looking backwards in time and seeing the failures of all of them and how they failed and why they failed. It's just basically, it's the same story over and over and over again. It's either just a grift or it's just, you know, poor leadership or it's just, you know what I mean? It's the same shit every time. Yeah, I, 
I see what you're saying, but like whenever yep. I look at, at these movements and movementarians and stuff like that, and who's suspicious and what and who's not, and I don't know if you've done like a lot of content on this guy, but like how do you not? How's Nick Fuentes not on your radar? Like that's the biggest, most obvious gay op I've ever seen in my life. Like he's a literal millionaire from yeah. some French guy who supposedly killed himself the next day after sending him a bunch. Yeah, of I know. I remember all that. I remember that. Jazz got some of his. Jazz got some of his Bitcoin too. I actually got half one. He's too. probably a yeah. too. You got half from that guy? The I got dude? half a nice. Bitcoin, yeah. I didn't get shit, man. I didn't get I never shit get shit for time. donations. You guys, like, I nine seasons of the Paranormies, right? And my donations are probably the the, the fewest of everybody. Yeah, Free, I do the shit for. You actually got half a Bitcoin from the guy. Um, and I thought it was fake because I didn't see it until two weeks later. And I checked my email and I was like, what do you mean half a Bitcoin? This got to be a scam. And then, I, <laughs> and then I went and looked and I was like, oh, fuck. Somebody did actually give me half a fucking Bitcoin. Oh, yeah, I sold like it immediately. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, it, well, it was at the time it was like $12,000. So, uh, yeah, I sold it immediately because <laughs> cause I was like, uh, I, I don't know if this is on the up and up. I, I just want to get rid of this and get my money. So, uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. actually yeah. what happened there, yeah. So oh, I did get know. half, but I didn't get uh, a quarter of a million or whatever the fuck uh, Fuentes got. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, obviously, dude, I remember I was at uh, a house in Florida with um, who was the big the dude that got married and Nick chased off it was one of his guys. Uh, one of his early guys. Remember when Nick pulled the knife on Halsey? Yeah. Yeah. On the on the stream, we were watching that live when it happened. I remember that, and um, the guy they called him fucking Sasquatch. What the hell was his name? Big the big tall dude that was with with Nick for the longest time. Oh yeah, I can't remember his name either, but I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he was there. He was there. He was part of the he was part of the TRS pool party. There was a TRS pool party, and they had a schism over the Groypers and uh, over the optics. It was the optics war, I guess. The, the Groypers and TRS guys, so the Wignats and the and the optics guys. And uh, Simon is what they're saying the name is. But Simon, yeah. that's the guy. Simon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was cool, man. I liked him. He was a young guy. I liked him. The uh, all the the, the Florida Gators, they were they were called. They were cool. They were a bunch of cool guys. I liked all those guys. Pretty sure I met my buddy from Metal Pure Fashion. I met Hook out there. He was cool. He's uh, one of the metal guitar players that that we know. Um, who else was out there? No, that was it. I thought there was one of the political guys too, but no. But yeah, Simon was there, and we watched. We watched. Well, Simon used to work for Richard night. Spencer, um, back in the day. I mean, it, yeah, for NPI or something. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I know all those. I know all those guys from way back then. So, but I don't know, dude. Is Nick obviously if he's still doing his thing, and I mean, he's being allowed to do all the stuff he does. Yeah, and he was, he's one of the people that told people to go to the Capitol building. Like, oh, yeah, Trump I know. And he didn't get brought up on charges. I know. And he's I know. Although that's the thing. is like, okay, with the with the Charlottesville lawsuit, oh, yeah, all the bad stuff that happened. You mean Richard Spencer and fucking Matt Parrott are each going to have to pay a million dollars? Get the fuck out of here. You can't get blood out of fucking turnip. Parrott ain't paying shit. You know? Parrot None of those guys are out. actually being punished. You know? It's like yeah, Parrot, Alex Parrot Jones and a billion that. dollar. What are they? What are they? $5 billion, that lawsuit? Or whatever, something like that. A billion yeah. dollars, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a billion. Something it was a billion. Yeah, I think it was eight hundred and eighty million, and they added some sort of extension to make it a, an even cool billion. Alex Jones isn't paying that shit. That's just bullshit. But anyway, it's just like it's just like with the with no. the TRS. I mean, not the TRS, but the the Charlottesville lawsuit. It was just fucking theater, you know. That whole thing was you got fucking you had Chris Cantwell representing himself and listening to him on the radio. You know, it was like he's out there talking like this, see. They sprayed me in my eyes. It was fucking horrible. <laughs> I was on the ground crying. <laughs> I was like lying on a bridge. I was like, somebody give me some fucking milk. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Listen. Oh, I got I to gotta be on my best tomorrow. El Revis to look at all my guns. Now, let me ask hey, you this. It, oh, well, you go ahead, oh, Dingo. Okay. Then I'll ask my final question. Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to ask Johnny what he thought about this comment in the chat. He said, these two don't disagree on anything. This is a waste of time. Feds, they don't like Trump. What? Yeah, we're feds because we don't like Trump. Oh, shut up. Like, <sighs> we've, we've been I gotta get up at four o'clock in the morning tomorrow and go to fucking work. Hey, I'm a fed. Shut up. Somebody clip that. 
Just <laughs> yeah. Do you know how many times I've said there's so many there's, that you don't need to clip that one? There's plenty of ones out there. Now, now, now let me ask you this, better. and then I'll, I'll wrap it up with Dingo, and I'll give Johnny a few more questions because it was really his appearance. But, you know, I thought it'd be good to have an interlocutor in here to kind of, you know, have some back and forth. Um, but um, is there a way to bring back the – the spirit of 2017, basically, or the spirit of 2016, whatever you want to say, of Charlottesville, um, to reunite, or is that is that time over? And if that time's over, is it over? <laughs> you want to go first? Sure. Um, I if there, I don't think you bring it back right now, like not anytime soon. Personally, uh, there's been too much dumb shit, too much shady shit that's happened uh, for most sensible people to trust something like that. I wouldn't even trust something like that, and I, I'm all gung ho, and I want that to happen so badly. But I would be like, nah, not right now. So I, I think it's going to be a while before something on that scale happens again. Um, and I don't think that, that means it's over for us, no. But yeah, go ahead, Johnny. No, that was that was pretty good. Um, I was going to also say, like, you know, don't be sad that it's over. Be happy that it happened. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those. It's not going to happen again. We don't have. You're not going to capture that lightning in a bottle that Trump was when he got elected. And the first thing he said was, I'm a nationalist. And every dude who on the right who voted for Trump was like, yeah, we got our guy. He's building the wall. You're not getting, you know, and, and Pepe and the meme. And the dude said Pepe to Hillary Clinton, right? Remember that? Like all that shit. You're not going to get that. You're not getting all that energy back. There was so much energy 2016, 2017, the beginning of 2017. And then Charlottesville happened and all the wind got sucked out of the sails. So... Um, can something happen? Maybe. Uh, will ever? Uh, will there ever be any kind of energy like Trump again? I don't know. I still find it really weird to me that everybody got so excited about a guy who's famous for having a gold toilet seat. It was actually gold, though. I think it was gold on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous with Robin Leach. Remember that. Yeah. Robin yes. Leach, the guy's name went. Robbing Leach. Anyways, the name. <laughs> Armed robbery. Amud Armory. Hmm, interesting. That's still Anyways. impressive. The toilet seat's still impressive. To yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's I'll what Donald Trump was it. famous for. Here's Donald Trump. He's got an airplane. It's got a gold seat. You'll never have one. That yeah. was that was well, lifestyle. I'll, I'll let you get back to it. And uh, I'm sorry anyway. for intruding on your your interview. Sorry. No, no, like no. I, I wanted to party. have a little back and forth anyway. So, yeah. It's all right. Love you, Dingo. I love you more, Johnny, and I'll talk to you no, soon, you dude. We'll All right, you better. Fucking <laughs> better. Talk to me soon. Jerk. All right, I'm gonna send you some um, pictures, some family photo updates. Okay, I got, I got some too. So. All right, cool. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Ralph. Later, brothers. I appreciate you. Um, yep, appreciate it. Now, it's just me and you now, Johnny. You've already been nice. here almost two hours. I love uh, Dingo. I do. I do. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cordial for the most part. Um, it was. You know how he gets sometimes, and then I get to be a jerk sometimes too. I get it. Yeah, I know, and so do I. <laughs> <laughs> um, Who can't be? You know yeah, I mean? I mean, we're all assholes on the internet. I mean, what what else can you do? Right. But um, let me ask you. So how about this? So we talk about conspiracy theories and flat Earth, which I don't believe in. I talked about that earlier. <laughs> um, but. Why don't you tell us something, the Killstream audience, like a conspiracy theory that maybe they haven't heard of? Conspiracy, quote oh, unquote, quote unquote. Uh, oh, man. There's so many things out there that people like. We have so many weird niche things. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, something that nobody's nobody would know. I mean, we we do we, I mean, we we talk a lot about. I mean, we don't necessarily believe everything, but a lot of what I like to call myself is not really even a conspiracy theorist, but like an, an observable reality enjoyer. Whether it's like my observable reality is like, for example, when I see something on the news and I my my gut tells me it's fake, I'm like, okay, or whatever on television, whatever it is, or in the in the media, or whatever, and my gut tells me it's fake. Well, I'm gonna believe that it's fake because I'm going to believe what my brain and my body is telling me that I'm seeing and hearing and whatever, right? Meanwhile, they're telling you, well, that's not what you're seeing. That happens a lot. So when it comes to things like the flat earth and that kind of stuff, I just, just what I, I observe, I observe that you can see too far. I observe that, that the stars have no parallax and they haven't moved. Uh, the, the Polaris has been where Polaris has been forever. The Big Dipper is always where the Big Dipper is, no matter what time of year it is, you know where it is. 
You know, if that was the case, if we were spinning at a thousand miles an hour and floating through the universe at 60,000 miles an hour and going in a different, and everybody was moving different directions, the stars would look a whole lot more like some retarded kid was drawing up there as opposed to being beautiful fucking constellations. But that's just me. Um, weird conspiracy theories. I don't know, man. There's so many. Uh, I don't necessarily believe in ghosts. How about that? I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't necessarily. That's weird. Like Johnny doesn't believe in ghosts. No, I don't. I don't necessarily. That would be one I, I would think like, you would believe in, actually. But but no, I don't. No, know. I believe like the ghost, the whole ghost industry, the whole like the Zach Bagans and all that stuff is just a way for them to sell um, hotel rooms at their their resorts and stuff. There, you know, they're. They're haunted houses. Yeah, there's supposed to, to be haunted them. shit here. I'm in the Yucatan in Mexico, and there's supposed to be all these like haunted places you can go and all this stuff. And I, mean, uh, I think America itself is haunted by Mesoamerican coins. <laughs> but like they're haunted whole, by something, whole, all right. But yeah, uh, it's different. It's, it's not ghosts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not ghosts. No, no, demons are no. not ghosts. <laughs> um, I don't believe in aliens. I don't either. Thing that people are. Yeah, I, I believe that, the, well, you know, everybody's like, oh, as soon as the government started talking about disclosure, I was like, well, aliens are fake. And I think, again, that might be part of, well, you know, right there, because you had the uh, the disclosure guy a couple months ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy, where, I can't remember. Were... Gorst, Gorst, yeah, Gorst yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. weird like that. They always have a weird name. Uh, the guy who supposedly decapitated his dad. Right. Yeah, I, uh, that supposedly happened like a day or two ago, I think, right? Is that, yesterday. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, 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 I saw that. Like yesterday, yeah. I was mad. I was mad. We were doing our live stream, and like uh, we, we stopped at 10, and apparently it happened at like 10.30. Yeah, like full decapitation. Uh, Philadelphia, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, that was on the list of stuff today. I don't know if we'll end up getting to it, but yeah, he, he supposedly decapitated his father. I, I don't know the motive or if there was even he's a, motive, a uh, He's supposedly trying to get people to rise up against the government, against, you know, and return this country to its Judeo-Christian roots. He used that phrase. Yeah, that's a little curious, I have to say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's very curious, and I'm mad it happened after my stream because like, there's a lot of stuff I'd like to say about this fake and gay. Yeah, that That's sounds quick... fake and gay, and I usually don't even go in for that. But yeah, that sounds fake and gay. Uh, I just so but uh, but of course, but of course, the TRS guys believe it's real. Oh, the TRS guys. Okay, you know what? Uh, we've had you on two hours. I'm not going to keep you all night, but uh, of course, I want to have you back again, maybe somewhat as a regular. You know, maybe once a month or something sure, like that. Come on, every, every, every cool with that. Um. But uh, how, how do you see the future for these TRS guys? I see them. They still have people that pay them money. I don't know how. Um, but they're going to limp along, and maybe they'll have to get a job. I don't know. People, There's people that are saying that they're not going to make it to the end of the year, to the end of 2024. That, that might happen. Um, I mean, if they, like, the original thing was to be a media, a right-wing media empire, like, the take, you know, to do media. And that's what they were supposed to, that was the reason why I signed on because I signed on to do, to do content for them. I was doing, doing podcasts. I was writing, writing bits for, for, uh, for Austin the show. $3 and guest. to do that, that was like their original plan. But now I think they fucked that up. I don't think, I don't think enough people will ever be able to trust them again. To where I think they lost the trust. Money. Yeah. That's what I think too. Yeah. 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 It's sad. And it's, it's kind of sad because, you know, they were good at doing the, the racist Opie and Anthony, you know, now it's. Now, but the other thing is, all the people who helped them write their good material are gone. They didn't write anything. Jesse, the, like that's why he's so bad about the Henry Rollins bits. The only bit he actually wrote. Everything else, he he had, <clears throat> he would farm content out. We had little little chat groups on Facebook where guys would get together and 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 uh, brainstorm content for him. People would turn in bits uh, for them to do, or <clears throat> you know, he would want them to be finished bits, but or he would have to read them himself. But a lot of their jokes, a lot of their jokes, most of their jokes were written by other people. You know, See, they don't I didn't have those that, You know, creators. because like I get on this show and every so often I'll have a few questions maybe prepared for a guest or something like that, but usually not. Usually uh, yeah. I'll let the guests lead the way and then, you know, play off what they say and maybe, you know, a couple things pop up or whatever. I don't believe in scripted live content, um, at least on the internet. I mean, if you're on TV, you're on TV, yeah. right? But like, yeah. well, you uh, do a good job with the interviews. I, like, you, like you said, you let the, you let the, the guests do a lot of the talking and then you just kind of like, kind of, you know, deflect it back and forth. Yes. And to have like 
you know, I mean, you can kind of tell by some of the bits they did that ended up not being funny. Apparently, apparently the fuck your small business wasn't his idea. You know, that was, that was a bit. Yeah. That he said that suggested. on a ranch show. Yeah. Somebody told yeah. me to do that. Yeah. Well, it's nothing's ever, that's the thing with him. This that we've, we've proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that nothing's ever their fault and everything always happens to them. You know, it's, it's never anybody's fault. Like the fact that he hates me now, he was, he was, he was tricked into hating me by jazz hands and, and Vasily and Tony Soviter, like my best friend of eight years was tricked into hating me. It's just bullshit. Like none of these people, that's the other thing. It's like the trust is lost. Like listening to that thing, you're like, how are you going to trust somebody anymore that admitted, admitted that it, like he let, he let some, some dude that he calls a parasite trick him into, into, you know, kicking his IRL friends to the curb. Like that's, that's so terrible. Like just the fact that they're just, they're, they're just terrible people and that's come out. And I mean, you know, you're supposedly such a horrible guy, but you're a nice dude. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't get the hate for you. I don't get the hate for you, Ralph. I really don't. I, I really don't. I, I haven't, I've stayed out of the Thank drama, you. but I hear a lot of people hate you. And I'm like, sure, why? They do. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I mean, people hate me too now. So whatever. That's true. Hey, man, if you know what, you're not doing it right. If you don't have some motherfuckers who hate you in this game. Uh, exactly. And that's always been my feeling. Now I have a little bit more than others, maybe, uh, in terms of people who hate me. Uh, and some of it, you know, I did to myself and, I've talked about this before and I was talking to somebody the other day and um, they're like, why do so many people hate you? And I, I said, it's because I'm so defiant. Um, they, <laughs> the people on the internet um, who watch these shows want people to prostrate themselves and beg for forgiveness and please forgive me and I'll turn over a new leaf and I won't be me anymore. And I'm so sorry for this Ooh. or that. And instead I'm like, fuck you, eat a bullet. Uh, and they really can't handle that because they think that they control this shit when in actuality, the hosts and the entertainers and the movers and the shakers are the ones who control this shit, not the people who watch. And that's just the truth. Now, the people who donate, the people who support the shows, yes, they do. But um, these idiots who just, you know, have nothing else to do with their day except sit around and try to call people out um, and, you know, force them into humbling themselves. I will never humble myself. You can humble this dick in your fucking mouth. Uh, <laughs> that's what you can do. Uh, and so I think a lot of it is, you know, I bring it on myself a little bit. Uh, <coughs> I, I'm just not going to be that person. Uh, and I have a feeling you're not that person either. <laughs> no, nah, I don't back down. I don't, I don't back down, dude. And I mean, and again, like all the dumb shit that have people in my, oh, Johnny, you stuck around those guys knowing that for so long. Jesse was my best friend. I let a lot of stuff go. You let a lot of things go when you're in the middle of something. And, you know, that's my friend, right? I let a lot of them, you know, so like I deserve some of the bullshit that I get for, for sticking around that group as long as I did. And, but, you know, hey, people make mistakes. People make mistakes. Uh, and well, here's too. the thing that nobody uh, thinks about. Here's the thing nobody thinks about. Doing all this stuff, getting doxxed, <clears throat> all the Charlottesville stuff, all my friends from high school, they don't talk to me anymore because they're fucking, Johnny's a fucking Nazi. You know, um, all my friends, all my family, they don't talk to me anymore. So these were the only friends that I had at the time. Like, I've, I've mended some fences and I've made a lot of newer friends, but like, and I, I have a couple of my family members that I still talk to now, but most of them are not. They don't speak to me, but these were my friends. This is like, these were people like, this was the group. I was in California alone. My, my wife and kid were on the East coast. We hadn't gotten back together yet at the time. Um, we were still divorced. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but I got, we, my wife and I had, we got married, had a kid, got divorced, got back together and had more kids. So, uh, like I fixed that part of my, my relation, my life. But, um, like these people, like when, when I got docs and all the bad stuff happened, they were the only people that were like on my side. You know, they were like my friends and they they were supposed to help take, you know, like they were my support group. Right. And so that was one of the reasons why I stuck around was because they were my they were my support group when I got doxxed. I had no family to fall. My family was like, whoa, whoa, I'm a liberal from Connecticut. No, you know, what I mean, like um, yeah, you're no longer I you're my, you're not my nephew anymore. I can't talk to you. You're not my cut Italians who's all the time. That's not my cousin. Fuck that. I don't talk to him anymore. It's not my cousin. You know, so. That was one of the reasons why I stuck around with those guys for so long. So if anybody has a problem with that, you can suck these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell people. Like people get mad at you stuck around for so long. Like, they were my they were literally my only friends at the time. Yes. And I, I overlooked a few things because they were my only friend. Jesse was my friend. 
You know, you, you, you do things with your friends. Anyways, whatever. That's all over with now. Yeah. Now, what's coming up on the Paranormies? What's coming up on the Paranormies? I believe we have, I, I think we have a guest this weekend. So it'll be our first guest of the season is episode three. Uh, last night's Nationalist Inquirer. Uh, we talked a lot about the Matt Walsh um, moon landing thing. Uh, that'll be released as the podcast tomorrow. Um, after that, we have a bunch of good stuff coming up this season. We did not do a theme. Last year's theme was cults, uh, which kind of went along with like the NJP thing last last year. But we did a we did a big thing on Jim Jones, like a three part thing on Jim Jones last year. Uh, some stuff on Manson. So this we are not doing a theme as of yet. Um, so if you have an episode suggestion, uh, you know, hit me up with that. Uh, something uh, you want to hear uh, us talk about? A what a, a what suggestion? An episode suggestion, like we've done, sure. we've done episodes on the Titanic. If we've done episodes on uh, different kinds of cryptids, we do uh, Paranormal America, where we take every we've we've done about twenty different states. What about the purple Nike people. motherfuckers? Have you done a show on them? The purple Nike motherfuckers, the Heaven's Gate. Yeah, in California. Yes, we did a Heaven's Gate episode in did. season three. I had to, yeah. I had to have already known you covered that. Well, you know what? The Heaven's Gate was so good though. Um, that was like such about, a crazy um, thing. Let's see. Uh, there's a cult in Mexico, um, and it's called, uh, let's see, um, uh, uh, Santa Muerte, um, and it's kind of like a mix of Catholicism and, and like, well, other stuff, um, but I think a show on 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 Santa Muerte. It's it's a it has a huge following. There's like 12 million people who follow it actually in Mexico yeah. and, and Latin America. Um, Our Lady of Holy Death actually is what that stands for, by the way. Yes, um, that is the Day of the Dead festivities. Right? No, no, but it's not. But it's seven. From, it's it, yeah. There is a Day of the Dead, okay. but this is separate from that. Uh, this is like their own religion that they've created uh, as a mix of Catholicism and maybe a little bit of the Day of the Dead too. Yeah. Um, but, um, I, I think a show on, on Santa Muerte. Yeah. It's a new female. Like, it's like the yeah. new female goddess or whatever. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. That's something we've done. We've done some, uh, episodes on, on religions. We did one on Mormonism and Scientology a while back. So those, those are very spoopy religions. Um, especially Scientology. Holy shit, dude. I mean, you've got L. Ron Hubbard, who is, who is connected to, uh, Jack Parsons, who is connected to NASA, you know, and that crazy stuff for jet propulsion laboratories. Um, so he, he was, he was a rocket scientist who founded a religion. Very strange, but yeah, I will ch <laughs> definitely check this out. Actually. I'm looking at this now. It's pretty fucking creepy. The Vatican and Santa Muerte. Okay. So you know, the Vatican is aware. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think, but there's uh... some stuff on JSTOR. So there's, there's like some academic papers on it too, on JSTOR. So I'll check that out. I'll, I'll check into it and, uh, maybe we'll have to do a, an episode on it. Yeah. Are you informed by this at all? Yes, there's actually um, there's a shrine to uh, to to Santa Muerte uh, here in in Merida. Uh, the bigger shrines in Mexico City, but uh, in Merida they have a shrine as well. Uh, okay, well, how about this? How about you come on my show to do this episode? Okay, we come talk about this on my show. I'm down. I could go film some footage right. of the shrine and uh, talk. To oh some fuck people. yeah, dude! Yeah, yeah, I'm down for That'd that. That'd be cool. Yeah, because uh, yeah. some people have been encouraging me to do that anyway. Now, of course, I won't go okay. there and be disrespectful uh, because uh, one yeah, of the things yeah. about Santa Muerte, um, uh, a, a lot of the followers of Santa Muerte um, have, uh, I guess you could say business interest outside of the uh normal uh business interest uh if that makes sense uh without uh <laughs> yes yes no, uh, i understand it was like going to the it was like going to the giant buddha in china and not taking pictures yeah 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 yeah, yeah. but i would i would love to do that actually and i think okay. it, i think it would be a good, yeah, yeah, it would be a good crossover and i'm totally down for that and i want to do more crossovers anyway so yeah i'm totally down for that hell yeah dude sounds like fun yes i just put it in my my prep chat with the guys. I said, we're going to do a crossover episode with Ralph on Santa Muerte. All right, let's do it. And uh, I appreciate Hell you. Yeah. And, and thank you for talking to Dingo. I thought you guys would probably get along pretty well. Uh, it seems like, yeah, we are seems like you mostly really, really agree on, on the main points now, at least well, anyway. Yeah. We're very good friends before. And then I left TRS and it was like, we're no longer allowed to be friends, you know, cause that was the whole thing is the, those people made people choose who they could and couldn't be friends with IRL. Well, that's you know, Scientology so. type shit. 
that's uh, yep. default. That's cult behavior. And that yeah, was why yeah. we did the that was why we did the theme on cults last season. But anyways, yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Oh, promote your shit. Yes, check out Paranormies, paranormies.com. Check out my website. We just did an update to the website. It's very cool. Um, there's like a link. You can directly go to the live streams on Tuesday directly from the site. You can watch them right there. Uh, paranormies.com and our Telegram, obviously the Paranormies. Um, it's the Paranormies present, excuse me, <laughs> on Telegram. Uh, we're on Twitter at the underscore Paranormies. Uh, check us out on the weekends. as content show during the week. It is a live stream called the Nationalist Inquirer. That's about it. Very cool. Uh, we, we sell shirts and shit on national.com. Actually, okay. yeah. All that shit's very on our cool. new website. Check it out. The new website's all very, very slick. Very cool. Just went on a lot slicker than TRS, yeah. I would imagine. Uh Way <laughs> slicker. That's why I keep mentioning it. I'm like, bro, bro, you're supposed to be a coder, like a website coder. Like, get the fuck out of here. That thing looks like that's pathetic. And the fact that the other guy is content to put his content on that crappy website just tells me all I need to know about that guy. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, I appreciate you and let's have you again, maybe next month, uh, four, for sure, four, six weeks, man. And, uh, I'll look into the yeah. Santa Muerte set, uh, stuff myself and try to get some footage and, uh, maybe yes. even a couple of interviews if I can find a couple of English speakers there. So. That'd be awesome. Yeah. We'll do a stream. We'll do a lot. We'll do a stream on my show and we'll just show the stuff on my, on my stuff. I'd love that, man. Right. I'd love that. Johnny Manon, right, cool. thank you, brother. Thank you. See you. All right. Peace out. That was Johnny Monoxide and Southern Dingo. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.